Today's game is brought to you by Schlitz, the master brewer's brew. Just one taste and you'll know, behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. By Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like their outstanding value. By Dialet National Sports for the latest scores, updates on sports news, and interviews with sports headliners. And by Allstate Insurance Companies. You're in good hands with Allstate. A beautiful September afternoon in Pittsburgh. Temperature about 70 degrees at game time. 74th consecutive sellout at Three River Stadium to watch the Steelers against the Chiefs. Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy. Pittsburgh has won the toss. Nick Lowry will kick off for Kansas City. Since 1970, the clubs have met nine times. KC won the first two. The Steelers have won the last seven in a row. There is Larry Anderson, the deep man for Pittsburgh. He was suffering from gastritis early in the week. He's hospitalized out now and ready to go. He's their primary kick return man now that Theo Bell has left the club, but he won't get a chance to run this one back. It'll be a touchback. Booming boot by Lowry. First and 10, Pittsburgh at the Steelers 20. And there is Terry Bradshaw. His TV series with Mel Tillis went down the tubes. His football career still flourishes. Thornton and Harris are his backs. Stallworth and Swan are both banged up. May not be able to go the distance. But they are starting. Benny Cunningham, biggest tight end in the NFL at 260 pounds. There is the offensive line. And still a good one, despite taking on some age in some places. First play from scrimmage, Franco Harris. Third leading rusher in NFL history behind Jim Brown and O.J. Simpson. Gets only a couple. He will go past, sometime this year, the 10,000-yard mark. The 3-4 Kansas City defense, Still and Bell, a couple of young draftees in recent years and among the very best, still in the Pro Bowl last year, Parrish the nose tackle, Howard, Manu Malayuna, Spaney, and Charles Jackson starting in place of Whitney Paul, not because Paul is hurt, but because Jackson outplayed him in preseason. Green and Harris are the safeties, Christopher and Barbara. Green and Harris drive on the corners, Christopher and Barbara are the safeties. Sidney Thornton fumbles as he is hit, but Pittsburgh is there to cover it up. Steve Corson, the right guard, averted disaster. Thornton had a good game going, but Trumpy coughed the football up. So far, Pittsburgh straight ahead, relying on the strength of their offensive linemen. Good job by a defensive person in there we, who will remain nameless, but Corson, man on the job. Great strength in that offensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Manu Maliuna seems to pull the ball away from Sidney Thornton. So the ball is at the 28, where it is third down and two, and it is a double tight end offense out of a tight set. Grossman, number 84, is lined up alongside Cunningham, number 89. Give to Sidney Thornton, hits right tackle into the stone wall, doesn't get the first down. Frank Manumaliuta pushed him back. Uh, one of the things that uh, has been a very well-kept secret around the NFL is the defense of the Kansas City Chiefs. With Art Still, with Spaney, with Manu Maliuna. Watch Larry Brown here on Still. Double team block down, but well filled by the linebacker up inside. Exactly the way they draw it up. Spaney, Manu Maliuna on the stop. It is fourth down. Back drops J.T. Smith, last year's leading punt return man, and this is Craig Colquitt. His stats from 1980, he has never had a punt block in his NFL career. Smith averaged 14 and a half yards for return last season, brought two of them back for scores. Colquitt, a two-step punter, gets it away from him. J.T. Smith back pedals to the 19, and here he comes. But he's not going too far. There's a flag down on the play as Smith hits the turf at about the 26. The punt went 50 yards. The return is good for five or six. And let's see what the call will be. Jim Tunney is the referee. Holding Kansas City. Ah, you hate to start that. The Kansas City philosophy presently is play, hopefully, field position with their defense. Get the ball, get the three downs and out for the offense, and then take the ball over good field position. And a penalty like that, normally it's against a youngster, a rookie trying to make the ball club, a little over-anxious. Veterans will use good discretion there and not take the penalty in that situation. Holding during the punt return, number 34, 10 yards, first down. Guilty party is a youngster, Lloyd Burris. 
usually happens. Opening game jitters, trying to do the best he possibly can. Al Dixon starting a tight end, one of four tight ends on their roster. They drafted Willie Scott, number one, and Marvin Harvey, number three. They see Scott as the starting tight end of the future, but Dixon played so well during the season, he's got the starting nod, at least temporarily. James Hadnot, second-year man out of Texas Tech with a good game, carrying off the right side on first down. Lauren Taves, the left side linebacker, makes the stop. L.C. Greenwood, Mean Joe Green, Gary Dunn, and John Banizak. There is some age there, especially on the left side with Greenwood and Green. Lauren Taves in place of the injured pro bowler Jack Ham, who broke his arm and will be out three or four more weeks. Lambert, last year's AFC Defensive Player of the Year, and Robin Cole on the right side. We saw the corners, Johnson and the veteran Blunt. J.T. Thomas is the free safety with the retirement of Mike Wagner. Johnny Dell is the strong safety. Not carries and he has a Kansas City first down before JT Thomas stops him. Understand, Bob, that Kansas City is in a very tenuous position with Bill Kenny playing today. Steve Fuller is out. Watch the trap on Joe Green. Good block. Jack Rudney in the center. Herkenhoff, left guard, Buddy, trying to move people out. Had not up the middle. 240 pounds used to play tight end. Old acquaintances there, Rudney in his 13th season, Green in his 14th, they've butted heads before. From the 26, it's first and 10. Kenny hasn't thrown a pass yet, Ted McKnight trying to come outside. He was their leading rusher last year. Maybe a yard. Ron Johnson, the left corner with the tackle. Great support, great support. Very characteristic of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Those linebackers and the cornerbacks they have are very tough cookies. And Johnson is uh, a guy who was somewhat hurt with the rules and regulations now in the NFL when it comes to pass coverage. But when it comes to support, he can hit with the linebackers. They give him a gain of two and call it second and eight. And a first passing situation for Kansas City. Marshall goes wide to the left. J.T. Smith is on the right side. In motion, the tight end, Al Dixon. They keep it on the ground. Hadnot hits right tackle and is shoved back. Robin Cole among the tacklers. Gary Dunn also there. Interesting, interesting. Oh. The uh, Pittsburgh Steelers defense was not vulnerable to the run last year. They were vulnerable to the pass, and of course the lack of pass rush was the reason for that. I'm rather surprised that Kansas City doesn't come out here winging it. Marv Levy, 4-12 and 12 in 78, his first year, improved to 7-9, and nine, and then 8-8. Eight and eight. Even that 8-8 eight and eight deceptive, they lost their first four last year, then took eight of their final 12. Look out. Flags all over the place. Free play, free play. Release it. L.C. Greenwood holding the ankle of Bill Kenny and saying, we'll be acquainted later. Just a little bit of the intimidation that those black hats have used over the last 10 or 11 years. They're masters at it. Not really flagrant, but just carrying the play to its end reminds you that 68 can still play. I'm the one with the gold shoes. LC. Defensive line, encroachment, third down. First down. See if we can pick it up here. Deceptive snap count by Kenny. Most of the offense, defensive linemen of the Pittsburgh Steelers in the neutral zone. Defensive offside. Now third down and a little bit over a yard. Third and six, we call it third and one, and Kenny still will, in all likelihood, not have to throw a pass. McKnight and Patton out of the backs. Billy Jackson. No. No? Well, let's see, maybe. Let's see what kind of spot they give. If they're generous, they'll give it to him. I'm not sure. Billy Jackson, the rookie from Alabama. L.C. Greenwood hit him first. John Banizak arguing for a favorable Steeler spot. Watch McKnight and Banasak. Donnie Shell was there first. Banasak decided that the odds were more favorable if he stepped in. The uh, first game of the season, they did give them the first down. Second first down, good possession by Kansas City. But the first game of the season is important for all players. You establish some superiority, that you're not out there to lie down and play dead. Therefore, Banasak and McKnight trying to uh, rem remind each other that they're here to play. Shot from our elevated NBC camera here at Three Rivers, 9.45 on the first quarter clock. The ball at the 37 of Kansas City as Dixon goes in motion and Kenny drops back to throw. He swings one out to McKnight. Ted McKnight dancing around tackle, turning it into a good play across the 45 to the 47-yard line of Kansas City. And that should be another chief first down. flaring here early in the ballgame.
talking about? I must tell you, I'm sure it was very, very difficult for the Pittsburgh Steelers players to live in Pittsburgh this offseason for the first time in their uh, some of these guys' careers. Personal foul, 56 offense, 56 defense. Correction, 89 offense, 56 defense. Offset after the first down. First down, Kansas City. Our Henry Marshall and Robin Cole got into it, and the penalties offset. The ball stays where it was at the 47 of KC. As I was about to say, for the first time in a number of years, Pittsburgh players had to look at themselves as what Robin Cole and Henry Marshall extracurricular activity. But I imagine we're going to have a lot of incidents of the Pittsburgh Steelers trying to show their brawn today early. And these fans of pump, they are looking for a return to Steeler form, Steeler dominance. Football is a passion here, not a sport. I think it's fair to say that not since the glory days of the Packers in Green Bay, as McKnight carries for about three, not since the Lombardi glory era in Green Bay, has an NFL team so embodied the spirit, the image, the identity of the town it represents as the Pittsburgh Steelers in the 70s. Well put. A look from behind at the Steeler bench. You'll notice, too, that it'll be a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers on and off the field today, which is uncharacteristic of the Pittsburgh Steelers in the last 10 years. They had 11 guys they started with, and they played them from the first down to the last down. Now there are a great many substitutions. Second and seven from just shy of midfield. Smith on the right and Marshall on the left. The handoff is to McKnight. A couple, no more. Fumble came after the whistle. He picked it up anyway. Jack Lambert, the tackle. Lambert at 220, one of the smaller middle linebackers in the NFL. You'd never know it if you were hit by him. Makes his living with quickness, though, Bob. Really is mobile behind that defensive line. And a lot of the idea of the defensive strategy of Pittsburgh is to keep people off Jack Lambert. Dixon, the tight end out. Carlos Carson, number 88, is in as a third wide receiver. Throws on the run incomplete. There's no flag. They let it go by. No flag. They're going to have to punt. Punt. Huh. Did you see what I saw? Well, it may have been a, a, a quick snap by one Jack Rudney, but it caught the offensive lineman of the Kansas City Chiefs unawares. Larry Anderson and Jim Smith go back to await the kick by Bob Grubb. Gruff, like Colquitt, is a two-step punter. So we're seeing two of the very few two-step punters in the NFL in the same game today. Gruff gets it away. Smith lets it bounce. Out of bounds inside the 20. As a matter of fact, last year he put 23 punts inside the 20-yard line. That was the best mark in the AFC. A 34-yard kick that time. The clock reads 7.55 to play first quarter. You know, Bob Trumpy, I was thinking about the eight playoff appearances in the 70s for the Steelers, in which they were 14 and 4 in 18 games. 15 players presently on the roster played in all four of their Super Bowl games. 33 of them played in at least one. Some of these guys have almost a full extra season of experience just in postseason play. True, true. On first down, they swing it to Sidney Thornton. And Thornton struggles to the 20-yard line. Gain of one, maybe two. Gary Spaney, who has led the Chiefs in tackles all three years he's been in the league, gets credit for that stop. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think you'll you'll see a lot more of what you just saw. That is, passes out the flat to the uh, to the backs. There's Chuck Noll, the uh, he is the orchestrator of this fine, fine franchise. But uh, they are going to try to throw the ball to the backs and to the tight end a lot more instead of forcing it downfield to their two outside receivers, Swan and Stallworth. Bradshaw has always been wide receiver oriented throughout his career. He'll take the drop here and look. Rolling left and throwing deep over the middle into some heavy coverage and nearly intercepted. Gary Barbaro is there, the free safety, and he had plenty of help. Swan was the target. Lynn caught 44 a year ago. That's one of the problems that Terry Bradshaw has had. He will put it up. Last year, as you see, Kansas City ranking way up there on the interception total. Seven by Eric Harris, ten of them by Gary Barbara. 
Pittsburgh now going with three wide receivers. Benny Cunningham comes out. And Jim Smith, who last year came up large in the absence of Stallworth and Swan with nine touchdown passes. When they go three wide receivers, they always put Smith alone on one side so that Stallworth and Swan are on the other side and they can't double cover them both. This time it's Smith on the left. Bradshaw of the defender Harris and then Stallworth can't hold it either. Stallworth because of that foot injury limited to just nine receptions in 1980. There's a flag down on the play. Whoops. Illegal use of the hands Pittsburgh. It's going to be a good matchup all day Bob. Illegal use of the hands pushing in the back. Number 55 declined. Worked out. That, that is Kolb on Bell. Here's the defense. This is the way you see it from the end of the end zone. This is where the game is played today. Downfield. Watch Harris. Just get his hand in the way. Good defense by Eric Harris. Guy who came out of Canada last year and caused a real row in Kansas City with his big contract, but earned his keep. Off the side of Colquitt's foot. I do not believe it was deflected. I think it was simply a bad punt. He was under some pressure. As we mentioned earlier, he has never had one block. Just a 21-yard punt, and Kansas City takes over in Pittsburgh territory. Coming right back. Al Dixon was rushing through, putting some heavy pressure on Colquitt, who, as we mentioned, is a two-step punter, gets them away quickly, has never had one block. And that one, while it was not touched, certainly was hurried, went for just 21 yards, first and 10 Chiefs at the 37-yard line of Pittsburgh. J.T. Smith is in a slot left. They send the tight end Dixon out wide to the right. And Marshall is wide to the left. Again, there is motion along the line and hold everything. On the offense, I believe, they'll get Charlie Getty for moving too quickly. Number 77. A moment ago, we saw Chuck Knoll on the Pittsburgh sideline. His record as he enters his 13th season here. 123, 68, and 1. Impressive enough. Illegal procedure against the Chiefs. But when you consider the fact that he opened 12 and 30 and then has built that record since then, there was a 1 and 13 season in there early on. And you realize just how dominant his club has been. Ball start. Offense. Still first down. First down and 15. He can take some of the credit, but uh, some of his first couple of drafts Awesome. Or outstanding. Joe Green, L.C. Greenwood, Mel Blunt in one year. And the Mike Wagners, yes. the Bradshaws, the Harrises, all in the space of two or three years to build the dynasty. Dixon in motion. Kenny dropping. Delayed handoff. Ted McKnight looking for running room. Shed's attack. Bill loses the ball. Pittsburgh's got it. Picked up on a hop by Jack Lambert. Lambert brings it back across the field. It'll be first down at the 47-yard line of the Chiefs for Pittsburgh. Lunatics have reason to whoop it up. That has always been one of the earmarks of the Pittsburgh Steeler defense. That was not evident last year. Big plays by their defense. Lambert, always around the football. The 220 pounds turns fullback here. That's the way Pittsburgh beats you. We have six minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first quarter. Still no score, but now it's Pittsburgh's turn to threaten. Jack Lambert, who scooped up the fumble by McKnight and brought it back into Kansas City territory. Last year, McKnight led the Chiefs in rushing yards with 693, but he averaged just 3.4, and it's obvious they continually try to set him up and try and break something, give him some room to run, but as yet he has not given them that outside threat. Two wide receivers on the right side. Harris and Thornton, the running backs, behind Terry Bradshaw. Bradshaw dropping on first down. With time. Swings it left side. Franco the catch. Driven out of bounds. Inside the 40-yard line of Kansas City. Run out of bounds by Jackson. Baltimore jumps in front of New England. Three zip on a 42-yard field goal by Mike Wood, who was set off to the Colts this week by the Chargers. There's 11.33 to play in the first quarter there. Three zip Colts. Once again, the pass out on the flat to Franco Harris last week against the New York Giants. Harris caught six passes, rather unusual in his career. Primarily a runner as opposed to a pass receiver. They got 
that nine, it's second and one. 6.39 to play in the first. The handoff is to Franklin. He'll sweep right. He'll get the first down. He'll lower his head. He'll deliver some punishment. He'll skip out of bounds. Gary Green shoved him up. There's a man whose place in the Hall of Fame has uh, already been dusted. You realize he has seven 1,000-yard seasons, 37 100-yard games, although last year he had just two. And for the first time in his career, or I should say for the first time since, I believe, 1971, he did not make 1,000 yards. But that means he's also carried it an awful lot of times, too. He and Jim Brown share the record with seven 1,000-yard seasons. Of course, Franco has had some years where he played 16 games. Brown had some where he played 12, never more than 14. When you look at Jimmy Brown's marks against the other greats, the Paytons, the Simpsons, the Harrises, and consider the averages and everything else, Jimmy Brown becomes all the more impressive. Here's John Stallworth, that great season in 1979. More than 1,000 yards in receptions, capped by the two great grabs against the Rams in the Super Bowl. Trying to come back this year, he makes the catch this time. From a bone graph in his foot, five years ago, John Stallworth would have been on the sideline probably for the remainder of his life. Now with uh, new things in orthopedic surgery, he can play. No way they do that procedure, huh, five, six no. years ago? No, I don't think they'd even try. Notice the momentum that turnover by the Pittsburgh Steelers defense has given the offense. Cunningham, the tight end on the left side. Stallworth, slot right. Swan, wide right. First and 10, 18 yard line. Keeping it in the air. Bradshaw out of the pocket. Fires. In the end zone, intended for Cunningham and broken up. Benny Cunningham. 260 pounds, but still Bob with excellent speed. He has in the past been called bionic, but this may be the crucial year for Benny Cunningham. He doesn't start catching the ball. I'm not sure if that could have been a reception, but Bradshaw was correct in throwing the ball low. Cunningham was open. He's got to make those catches. Let's play it on Benny. Randy Grossman, his backup, has some cracked ribs, two of them. Might play today, but if so, with a black jacket on. Second and ten from the 18-yard line. We have no score. The Steelers are threatening. Bradshaw, quick snap and drop. And he throws over the middle into heavy coverage. The deflection and the catch. Touchdown, down forward. That ball went through three sets of hands, Bob. I think they're still talking about it. No catch. The ball bounced on the ground. It went through. Third down. The ball was trapped. Hit the ground. Incomplete pass. Third down. One official had signal touchdown, Trump. I believe it went through Thomas Howard's hands, then through Sidney Thornton's hands, and then into Stallworth's hands. One, two. Yes, sir. It bounced. Excellent call. Excellent call. Hit the ground as he juggled it. Third and ten. They've got to go to the eight. One more look. Smith on the left. Swan wide right. Stallworth slot right. Bradshaw again with time. Touchdown this time. No question about it. Lynn Swan. Swan got six. One of the all-time greats at the receiver position, and in the years that he's played, now in his eighth season, you realize that this number 88 of the Pittsburgh Steelers has never had a thousand-yard pass reception season. But he makes every one count, and they come in clutch situations. Here's a big story. Dave Trout, and an even bigger story now, as he misses his first point-after touchdown try. Dave Trout, a rookie from Pittsburgh. They cut Matt Barr to keep him. Trout kicks off deeper, but there is question about his placement accuracy. And those questions continue. Six zip Steelers. In New York at Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium, the Seahawks have moved ahead of the Bengals. Kenny Anderson looking for a re receiver, instead finding number 44, John Harris. He brings him back for the touchdown. Seattle was in front, 7 0. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. The double bobs cost us some trouble. Dave Trout put 11 of his 14 kickoffs during preseason into the end zone. That's what got him the job. Stop 
and near the 20. That's what the Steeler people were telling us yesterday, Trump. They feel that their defense, which quite honestly is not as overpowering as it has been in the past, their defense needs some help. And the long kickoffs of Trout are going to have those opposing offenses starting around the 20-yard line. Five, six years ago, they keep bar and cut trout, but now things are different. But they are also giving up on 200 points the last two seasons. Matt Barr, 96 last year, 100 the year before, and that's the man that made the decision. Chuck Noll. Trout never even kicked field goals until he was a senior at Pitt when he hit 15 out of 20. In the preseason, he was one of two. He saw him just miss his first regular season conversion try. Joe Delaney. Delaney. The rookie out of Northwest Louisiana, little guy at 5'10 and 180, is stopped by L.C. Greenwood. L.C. Greenwood will be 35 years of age on Tuesday. Bob, I think it's safe to say that Kansas City is so afraid of losing their quarterback, Kenny, the only one with experience that they have, that they're going to run the ball all day. Bob Galliano is behind him. Steve Fuller is in uniform on the sideline with damaged cartilage in his knee. Under no circumstances would he play. If both Galliano and Kenny were hurt, Bob Grupp, the punter, would become the quarterback. 5-22 and counting. Second and five from the 25. Kenny under pressure, being chased, and unloading incomplete. Interference. Interference. No. No flag. The official reached for his flag and then stopped. Let's watch Robin Cole. I think he should have pulled it out. You'll see Kenny throw back across his body, which is a very, very tough thing to do. There's the offensive line looking for protection. Throwing back over. 67 all over him. Gary Dunn. Gary Dunn. We're not going to see the interference, but I think the official should have kept reaching for that flag. Marv Levy said about two weeks ago, if his club kept as many as 10 rookies this year, he'd be worried. I checked the chief roster just prior to kickoff. They got 10 rookies. Uh-oh. Bill Kenny. Last year threw just 69 passes, completed 54% of them. Five of them went for scores. Joe Delaney on third and five, trying to sweep, got the first down, and then oh. skips out of bounds. Should not have skipped out of bounds. He could have gained another five yards. J.T. Thomas was chasing him and closing ground as Delaney elected to step out. We mentioned the quarterback situation of the Kansas City Chiefs. We have it on good authority that Mr. Pastorini, depending on the situation with Bill Kenny after this game, may be in Kansas City to talk turkey with the Chiefs come Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. About a week ago, they said they were not interested in it. Now they've changed their minds. Kenny with a big game against the Colts toward the end of last season. Filling in for Steve Fuller now. 5.09 on the clock. The give is to Mike Williams. And Williams is brought down by Lauren Taves and plenty of friends. Better in coverage than he is against the run, but he plays behind a great defensive end in L.C. Greenwood. That's the young man that a few years ago, there's Steve Fuller sitting on the sideline. Orthoscopic knee surgery. About, what, three weeks ago? I think he's got two weeks left before he can come back, and they want to take no chances with him. At least that long. Taves threw Williams for a loss of three. Second and 13 from the 35-yard line. Kenny, back penalty against the pressure. Lobs it out to Mike Williams. Williams, engulfed and brought down at the 38. Only three yards. It'll be third and ten, and Jack Lambert, as always, was right around the ball. Stop by Lambert. Well set up by the offense, but Mr. Williams has to realize that when you get the ball right there, go straight up the field and take your chances instead of trying to dance. Can you give me a list of linebackers who play pass coverage better than Jack Lambert? Yeah, Jack Ham. But that's, I believe, where the list ends. Stan Rome has come in as a third wide receiver. yardstick I believe depending upon where they spot it and he might have the first down solely on individual effort a pass underneath the linebackers there's Lauren Tapes you'll see Marshall catch the ball directly in front of him this is a missed tackle should be fourth down a good move by Henry Marshall who wears that famous 89 of the Kansas City Chiefs color once owned by one Otis Taylor so Henry Marshall veteran out of Missouri Gets the first down. 
from the 48-yard line of Kansas City. The Chiefs were in Pittsburgh territory earlier and couldn't keep the drive going. Joe Delaney carries. And Delaney gets three or four yards right into the middle of the Steel Curtain defense. And that means Jack Lambert was involved on the hit. Gary Dunn also there. You see some of the substitutions that can that Pittsburgh is now using. Yeah, Bob Coors in there at a defensive end. I tell you, it's amazing that four years ago, Pittsburgh would not make a substitution unless somebody was bleeding or had a broken bone. They had 11 guys that they played with in all kinds of weather. Now as a concession to that age, they will use different fronts, different combinations, plenty of personnel, unlike the Super Bowl. Oh, year. great pattern, and Henry Marshall is gone. Touchdown, game tied. There's nothing to that. That's too easy. That's way too easy. Obviously a mix-up in the defensive backfield. They had Pittsburgh had number 42 in there. Marv Levy rejoices. Boy, that happened in a hurry. Yeah. Anthony Washington, rookie defensive back, was in there, and somebody missed coverage. You'll, you'll see 31 Donnie Shell in the general vicinity. 24 JT Thomas. A rare mistake by the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. And now a chance for Kansas City to go on top because of the missed extra point. Nick Lowry hit all 37 of his point after touchdown tries a year ago. A young man out of Dartmouth. One of the great long distance kickers had a 57 yard field goal a year ago. Perfect. Kansas City has taken the lead at 7-6. We've got two minutes and 14 seconds to play in the first quarter. I wonder what Mr. Knoll is thinking about that mixed extra, missed extra point now. He is in jeopardy by young Mr. Trout. Uh, interesting that uh, Matt Barr lost his job in Pittsburgh here this preseason without ever having tried a field goal. Totally on the strength of, as you said, Trout's kickoffs. He made the team in at Pittsburgh. He wasn't even their number one place kicker. They had two place kickers, one for accuracy and Trout for distance. Well, Trout did what Chuck Noll asked him to do on the kickoff following the touchdown. He set Kansas City up only at their own 20-yard line, and there is young Dave Trout. But they went 80 yards in eight plays for the score, and then the PAT by Lowry nudges them in front 7-6. This telecast presented by authority of the NFL, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the NFL is prohibited. We were talking about building the Kansas City Chiefs and the great drafts which built a Steeler dynasty a decade ago. Well, let's compare. Since 1977, the Steelers in the first round, Robin Cole, then Ron Johnson, then Greg Hawthorne, then Mark Malone, now a third-string quarterback that they're talking about playing at another position, and Keith Gary, the Oklahoma defensive lineman, who decided not to play in the NFL and now is in Canada. Check these first-round choices by the Chiefs, who, of course, were picking much earlier than the Steelers, who are always picking last or close to it. Gary Green in 1977, Mark Steele in 78, Mike Bell in 79, Brad Buddy in 1980. This will be a touchback, another good boot by Lowry. And this year, Willie Scott from South Carolina, who ultimately will be their starting tight end. So they have used those first round draft choices very, very well. You eventually pay the price for being the Super Bowl champion, and that is picking 28th in the first round. Baltimore now extends its lead over New England, 10 0. Colts were 0 4 in preseason, and last year, New England kicked them all over the lot a couple of times. They're out for revenge. Kansas City scoring drive, 80 yards, seven plays, three minutes and 47 seconds. And the last 28 to Henry Marshall. Bradshaw brings him back, 51% completion mark in 1980. After the play fade, he throws long and the catch made. Oh, what a daily grab. A great catch by John Stallworth. 37-yard pickup. You were right, though, Trump. Swan was running a fly pattern, and it looked to me like he was open. Swan was the decoy. Stallworth up the field, out to the sideline, then up. This is put on the line by Terry Bradshaw. That is a great, great throw and tremendous concentration on the football. You say you want to play professional football, son? Well, you got to do this, too. That's along with driving the big, fancy foreign cars. We called it a gain of 37. Make it 27. Just inside two minutes to play in the first quarter. Harrison Thornton to the running back. Sidney Thornton gets the call and nudges across oh, midfield. Oh, Loose oh. football. Loose football. Who's got it? Oh, Pittsburgh retains possession. Update 
Street time. Let's go to Brian Gumble in New York. Thank you, Bob Costas, at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. The Seahawks are pouring it on the Bengals. Still first quarter action. Jim Zorn up top to Steve Larger, 36 yards. Seahawks out in front by a score of 14 to nothing. Bob? Benny Cunningham made that last recovery for Pittsburgh. Last year, Kansas City was second best in the entire NFL behind the Atlanta Falcons on the giveaway takeaway table. Number of turnovers they picked off, and as against the number they gave away, here's another fumble, and they pick it up, and it may go for a score. Jackson gets around Harris, Charles Jackson inside the 20, and Charles Jackson is down at the 15-yard line. Whoops. How often in the last 10 years have you heard people in Pittsburgh boo? blitz by the Kansas City Chiefs. All four linebackers were coming. You'll see them in the backfield just as he gets the football. Still, Spaney, Bell, all three of them are there. Picked up by Jackson. Wow. Talk about speak of the devil, Trump. I was just saying that only Atlanta was better on that giveaway takeaway table a year ago than the Chiefs. And in virtually all of their eight victories in 1980, the Chiefs took the ball away more frequently than they gave it up. Let's see if they can capitalize on this turnover. Steelers now had three fumbles, lost one. Just over a minute to play from the 15-yard line. First and 10, leading 7-6. The Chiefs go to work. Joe Delaney bangs for a good game. Down to the 8-yard line. Banizak wraps him up. Gain of 7. They are picking on, presently, Joe Green, Bob. They are trapping him. The left guard is coming over from the Kansas City Chiefs. And that is Brad Buddy. First-round draft choice last year. The only father and son first-round draft choice for the same team in the history of the NFL. The old man is Ed. Second down and a short four. They pitch it back to Delaney. Delaney the rookie. Flag. I think we're going to have a major penalty here against Kansas City. I won't give his number, but I think I saw an offensive lineman push a Pittsburgh Steeler in the back. Illegal use of the hands? Yes, sir. You got it. They'll give you the number. I think it's 66, Brad Buddy. Buddy, the youngster of Kansas City's offensive line in his second year at USC. Everybody else has at least six years of experience. Illegal use of the hands, pushing in the back. Number 48. Whoops. Ten yards. Still second down. I apologize, I apologize to Ed, to Brad, and everybody named Buddy. Mr. Hadnot. So the ball is pushed back to the 17-yard line. We're at second down and 12 yards to go. Bill Kinney. With time. Bumping it long. Nobody anywhere near it except Mel Blunt that's over his head too. Right and out of the end zone. Good coverage by the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive backs. Mel Blunt covering Marshall. Mel Blunt's been covering people all over the field for a number of years. You'll see the good coverage. And that's supposed to be illegal, but not a lot, just a little. But Kenny threw it away. Good choice. I would expect right here, historically, the Pittsburgh Steelers, this is their big play position. Blitz or something out of the ordinary to disrupt the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Carlos Carson in, third wide receiver, tight end Al Dixon out. They need 12, they swing it to Delaney and get nothing. Tough catch to make, tough catch to make. Running straight, straight away from the football. Ball is thrown directly behind the young man. He can't stop his momentum and come around and pick it up. Well, the Chiefs got inside the 10-yard line of Pittsburgh, and at most, they will come away with three. Lowry, 20 of 26 field goals last year, and almost all the boots he missed were very long. As a matter of fact, he had four of seven from beyond 50 yards. Rough kneels at the 25. This is a 35-yard attempt, which Nick Lowry hits, and it's perfect. Flag on the flag. They got 12 guys on the field. Pittsburgh has 12 guys on the field. Well, they'll decline it in that case. 
because the five yards would not give them the first. On defense, Feldman on the field, and encroachment, both on defense. That's the George Hallis trick. Yeah, it worked for the Papa Bear. It doesn't work for Chuck Noll, at least not this time. Take the points. Take the points. Yeah, they got to because the sure. five yards won't give them what they need. Both fouls, encroachment defense, too many men on the field defense, decline, field goal count. Three points. Score is Kansas City. Once again, mental mistakes by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Very uncharacteristic. I think Chuck Noll can put up with the performance deficiencies because of age, but when you've got 12 men on the field, that's when you get out the whip if you're the head coach. Eight seconds to play in the first quarter, and the Chiefs lead it by a score of 10-6. And the difference is strictly the toe of Nick Lowry. Trout missed the conversion. Lowry hit his, plus a 35-yard field goal. These people in Pittsburgh are sophisticated football fans. Realizing in that situation right there where the boo was, Sidney Thornton was late getting on the field. They want full concentration from these Pittsburgh Steelers. As I said, this is a passion in Three Rivers Stadium. It is not a sport. A writer for the Boston Globe described Pittsburgh and its fans as a place where tough jobs produce tough people who relish a tough game. <laughs> Again, I'll have to sit on it. Boy, Nick Lowry is really doing the job today for the Chiefs. That's exactly what Pittsburgh wants out of their kicker. And that was the last play of the first quarter. When we come back, it'll be first and 10 Pittsburgh at their own 20-yard line at the end of the first 15 minutes. Chiefs 10, Steelers 6. New York and Foxborough. The Patriots are on the board against the Colts. We're looking at Steve Brogan. Give here to Andy Johnson. Option pass into the end zone to Mosa Tatupu. Patriots trail by three. It's 10 7. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. Can they be the best again in 81 and get that one for the thumb that they were talking about a year ago? And by the way, looking at a banner, where's the steel curtain banner, Tom? Huh? Gone. Took it down last year. Frank Go Harris carries off the left side. Franco Harris, who came into this game with 9,352 career rushing yards, plus an extra 1,000, more than 1,000, in postseason play. He has actually played two extra years just in postseason competition by the number of carries. is something like 384. Had a report from the Steelers bench that Ron Johnson, starting cornerback for the Steelers, is out with a bad ankle. Got four to the 24, second down at six. Opening second to the second quarter. Chiefs lead at 10 to six. The give is to Greg Hawthorne. Bob, notice very closely now the running backs of the Pittsburgh Steelers are carrying the ball uh, like they, uh, like the thing is worth a million dollars. They do not want to fumble the football, and it takes away some of the, some of the real spurt of the running backs. You saw Hawthorne there really cradling the football. Is that he is a better pass receiver than anything else. And as we mentioned earlier, Bradshaw appears more inclined to go tight end and to go to his backs these days than in the past when he used to air it out almost exclusively to that great four wide receiver. At least that's what the offensive coaches want him to do. Both wide receivers are on the right side, third and two. Give it to Franco. Gets the two yards and then some. Lowers his head, moves across the 35 yard line. the number all the 32s that have played the game watch art still 67 best defensive lineman in the Kansas City Chiefs runs right by him he tries to run around the block of Larry Brown Franco Harris just shy of 800 yards last year breaking that string of thousand yard seasons Bradshaw rolling right a Pittsburgh first down. Charles Jackson, the man who made the fumble recovery and long run a while ago, gets in on the tackle. A young man could be a big part in the success of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. He is yet to live up to his potential. His 
statistics this year weighing about weighing about 260 pounds he is very very difficult to bring down but he's never really kept his head in the football game physically he's one of the best but emotionally and spiritually he's got a long way to go about Rudy 12 20 to play as Bradshaw takes a quick snap and drops back he's got time he throws it out to the right side and Franco Harris makes the catch out of the backfield Franco Harris is in Kansas City territory at about the 44 yard line Thomas Howard hits him and stops him Two successive passes, one to the tight end on the screen, and to Franco Harris out of the backfield. The Steelers, Trump, are doing a lot of shifting along their offensive line. Too much to keep track of play to play, but generally speaking, they're giving those veterans some relief up there. Yeah, they have three guards in Corson, Wolfley, and McGriff, and they have three tackles in Cole, Brown, and Penny. And all six of those guys will move in and out. The only consistent performer, Mike Webster, all pro center for the last four or five years playing in his 120th consecutive game, did not miss a single offensive play in 1980. They pitch it back to Greg Hawthorne, and Hawthorne gets a rude how do you do. Charles Jackson led the charge. There's number 34, Lloyd Burris, a rookie out of Maryland, and ultimately they think he may well be their starting strong safety. Right now, Herb Christopher is the guy, but Burris is playing a lot already and may be the starter eventually. Third round pick this year. There's Chuck Knoll, the... Pittsburgh Steeler head man and Mark Malone, the young man on the sideline there who was drafted as a quarterback and caught three passes last week as a wide receiver against the New York Giants. They did that with another player, Bill Hurley, quarterback out of Syracuse a couple of years ago. Made him a defensive back, ultimately had to cut him. New Orleans picked him up. All right, here's a third down play from just outside the Kansas City 45-yard line. intended for Cunningham. Franco Harris was wide open. Good pressure by Art Still and company. You this mentioned to me, Bob, earlier that throughout the years, Pittsburgh's wide receivers have run their patterns deeper than almost any other core of wide receivers in the league. Does that remain true? Uh, yes, I believe so. As long as they can maintain that consistent running game, they have very, very strong offensive linemen. They get good pass protection, Bradshaw does. And it distorts the defense a little more than usual, no matter who they play. Their receivers run two, three, maybe even four yards deeper than usual. Greg Colquitt's last punt was hurried and carried only 21 yards. This one he's trying to put out down in the coffin corner, but it goes right into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. So the net on this is only 25 yards. The line of scrimmage was the 45 of Kansas City. Now the Chiefs will take the ball at their own 20. We have 10 minutes and 27 seconds to play second quarter. Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, and the Steelers trail the Chiefs 10-6. Come and gone since Mean Joe Green was Chuck Knoll's number one choice out of North Texas State, and the reality is that Joe Green will play less this year than at any time in the past when he has been healthy. Yeah. Actually, because of postseason appearances, he's played 14 years worth of games. The pitch is to 10 McKnight, and McKnight cannot sweep left. A gain of one at the very most. Chased and brought down by Gary Dunn, number 67. I have yet to win my first game as a head football coach in the NFL, but this is no time to be conservative. Watch the man on the right of Marv Levy give the hand signals to the quarterback. Here's the pitch to McKnight. But Robin Cole stands up, had not, and done in on the tackle. Bill Kenny, the Kansas City quarterback, playing with bruised, damaged ribs. He was hit hard a couple of weeks ago in a preseason game by Lee Nelson of the Cardinals. And he's very, very vulnerable to a hit today. And should he be sidelined, the very inexperienced Bob Galliano would get the call. They give it to McKnight, hits left tackle. Only a couple. If I may make a comment, though, your statement on Galliano is very true, but Galliano can do this. He can hand off. I think if you have a healthy quarterback, you must throw the football. Jack Lambert, number 58. Watch the quickness. Avoids the block by the tight end. Right there to make the tackle. He is a gifted performer, and he's the leader on that defense. They cannot do anything without Jack Lambert in there, that defense. Third and eight for the 22-yard line. Clock moving exactly nine minutes to play in the first half. The Chiefs lead it by a score of 10-6. Three wide receivers set up as Stan Rome has come in. Blitz, blitz. Bill Kenny in trouble and sacked. Jack Lambert got there on the blitz. Quarterback 
back sacks, the lowest total in the NFL. But conversely, Kansas City was the worst team in the entire league at protecting their quarterback. So I don't know which is the more important factor, but Kenny winds up on the seat of his pants. Now good field position awaits the Steelers. Bob Grupp will have to kick out of his own end zone. High snap. Gets it away. Smith lets it bounce, a Pittsburgh bounce. Inside the 40 of Kansas City. Punt carries just 28 yards. Clock reads, 8 minutes, 22 seconds to play. First half, Steelers have a chance to go back in front. Good field position when we come back. Next Sunday, Earl Campbell proves he's no stiff. But don't underestimate this man, Brian Sight. He can hit the end zone all day. Houston versus Cleveland, what a battle. Or the New England Patriots try to ground the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles. Check local listings. Last year in this ballpark, the Chiefs led the Steelers 16-7. It was Rocky Blyer's last home game as a member of the Pittsburgh club. The Steelers rallied late and won at 21-16. Here the Chiefs lead it 10-6. Just over eight minutes to play in the first half. It is Pittsburgh ball at the 38-yard line of Kansas City. They give us to Franco Harris. Harris has about six yards before being stopped by Gary Spady, one of the inside linebackers. Watch that play for years. The weak side sweep. Franco Harris has had only one 100-yard game in a season opener. That's an oddity. That came in 1977 against the San Francisco 49ers. We pause briefly for station identification on the NBC television network. This is WDAF TV 4, Kansas City. Bob Costas and Bob Trumpy, Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. Season opener, Chiefs and the Steelers, beautiful day, temperature 70 degrees, Pittsburgh on the march, Greg Hawthorne, right into the middle of that 3-4 defense of the Kansas City Chiefs, and close to a first down, they may measure. Once again, protecting the football very much, Art Steele takes on Larry Brown, that's two hulks right there, look at the quickness, in on the tackle, he is a fine, fine player, made the Pro Bowl last year out of Kentucky, first round draft choice a couple, three years ago, he can play. That should be Ron Johnson. Yeah, it is. Trouble with that ankle. Out for the rest of the game, we're told. This is going to be third and less than a yard coming up. Interesting contrast between the two ends in that 3-4 setup. Art still strictly a finesse guy. Very smooth, almost effortless. Mike Bell, a wild man on the other side. Tight formation, Steelers. In motion, Hawthorne. They ask Franco to get it. He does. Play. Penalty marker down. Kansas City. Well, you take the penalty here because five is more than what Franco got on the carry. Johnson's injury must be serious. He's going off in a wheelchair, Bob. At the left 10-yard line, there he goes. Encroachment lining up in the neutral zone, number 55. Tapes will look good if he applies for workman's cup. <laughs> looks pretty relaxed to me. Yeah, that's certainly a bad start, though, for a defense that uh, is having their problems. From the 23-yard line now, Stallworth left, and Swan is right. Bradshaw, sideline pattern, catch is made by John Stallworth. Eric Harris was there on the coverage. Second down play coming up, but first let's go to New York. And here's Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Okay, thanks, Bob. At St. Louis Bush Stadium, the Dolphins have found some offense to go with that great defense. David Woodley looking into the corner of the end zone finds Jimmy Seflo out of Penn State. Touchdown, Miami out in front of St. Louis, 10-0 in the second. Bob? The connection between Bradshaw and Stallworth was good for eight. Now it's Stallworth in a slot right, and Swan is wide to the right. On second down and two for the 16-yard line. The quarterback's dream, this spot right here, second and two. So many things you can do. They keep it on the ground. Franco goes through the hole. First down. First and goal, Pittsburgh. Like, get the first down. Go to your bread and butter back. Franco always seems to start very slow. Well, Chuck Knoll did not use him a lot in the preseason. Still has the strength. Fine ball carrier. Look at there. Heading towards 100. There may never have been a time when Franco Harris was regarded at any one particular time as the very best running back in football, but he has spanned two eras. The O.J. Simpsons and now through the Walter Paytons, the Earl Campbells, the O.J. Andersons, and has been among the very best during that entire period. Bradshaw for the 
sideline intended for Stallworth. Couldn't hold it. Good coverage by Eric Harris. Down there, you've got to play man-to-man -man coverage, and you're only allowed one bump in that first five yards. I'm sure you'll see Harris try to get one. There it is. Ball thrown behind him. Second and goal from the seven-yard line. Franco Harris, six carries for 48 yards thus far. Steelers trail 10-6, but they're knocking on the door. The pitch to Franco. A sweep right. Blockers in front of him. Touchdown, Franco Harris. tackle you see that offensive line player watch 79 270 pounds converted tight end watch him plant that cornerback 24 Gary Green and Franco Harris waltzes in now Trout who missed his first conversion try and is this is this one where's Chuck Noll What's he thinking right now? Dave Trout, the rookie from Pittsburgh, walks off, and the story which we hinted at earlier becomes bigger by the minute. In New York at St. Louis Bush Stadium, the Dolphins are set to knock on the door once again. Otis Anderson has the ball pop loose and wanders back about 15 yards. Finally, Gerald Small corrals it. Dolphins knocking at the door and already leading 10-0 in the second. Let's go back to Three Rivers and Bob Costas. <laughs> What you are hearing and seeing is a standing ovation for a place kicker who has missed two extra points. The Steeler fans trying to show that they're behind young Dave Trout. A moment ago, Chuck Knoll counseled him on the sidelines. Then Donnie Shell came over and talked to him. Then the entire team huddled around him. And Trout booms it into the end zone, and they won't bring it out. The adrenaline is flowing again for young Dave Trout. There was never any doubt. And he could get the kickoffs deep. The question is, can he put it between the uprights on the place kicks? But, Bob, these fans know as well as you and I do that will last only so long. He has got to score points for this football team. And missing extra points, it's tough for him. I mean, I'm sure he's sat in the stands here in Riverfront Stadium for a long time. From the Pittsburgh area, went to Pitt. But that honeymoon, that standing ovation for his kickoff will last a very short time. Replacing Thomas as cornerback, or excuse me, Ron Johnson at cornerback. Woodruff is 5'11", 198 in his third year out of Louisville. The fastest man on the team, and ordinarily they're nickelback, but pressed into regular service here. This, as we mentioned earlier, the 74th consecutive time that there have been no empty seats in a Steeler game at Three Rivers. Both receivers out to the right side, second and six for the 24-yard line. 38 and counting on the second quarter clock. Delaney. Mel Blunt chased him and several of Mel's friends found him. L.C. Greenwood led the charge. Mel Blunt at 6'3", 205 pounds, been one of the most devastating cornerbacks in the history of the NFL, at least for the last 11 years. Did his job, turned that play in, allowed L.C. Greenwood to catch up with it. He is a tough player. Robin Cole also in there. That's a fine defense when they want to play. I think it's those black helmets. They all look like Darth Vader out there across the line of scrimmage from me. So now it's third and eight, exactly four minutes on the clock. Bill Kenny under pressure, looking over the middle of Wobbler, finds Henry Marshall. Marshall had caught the touchdown pass a moment ago, stays in bounds, battles for extra yardage. He's at the 45 of Kansas City for the first down. Blunt and Shell ran into each other, Bob. Therefore, Henry Marshall wide open. So far, Kansas City's been able to protect Bill Kinney. 
The touchdown earlier by Franco Harris, and here we watch Dave Trout practicing to try and avoid what's happened twice already at this point after. The touchdown by Harris was the 77th rushing touchdown of his career, and overall, the 83rd touchdown, rushing and passing combined in a great NFL career. Look at this. Look at this. Obviously, something wrong with the defense. Highly unusual for Pittsburgh. So the Steelers take a timeout they wish they didn't have to use. 3.07 remaining second quarter. We'll be right back. Henry Marshall, who caught that last pass for the Kansas City first down, has three catches so far in the first half for 81 yards. Kenny, 7 of 11 for 98 yards. That's a good first half performance against the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though their defense against the pass last year ranked 22nd in the NFL. Henry Marshall left, J.T. Smith to the right, back split behind Kenny, who put it in the air on first down, out of the pocket, hit as he throws, almost intercepted by a diving Mel Blunt who has 46 career pickoffs for the last year. Time for an update for Brian Gumbel in New York. Brian? All right, Bob, at Schaefer Stadium in Foxborough, the Patriots have taken the lead away from the Colts. This is Steve Grogan working with Carlos Pennywell, a 23-yard scoring strike. The point after has the Pats in front, 14-13 in the second. Bob? Marv Levy along the Chiefs' sideline. His club trails by a score of 12-10. Kenny was very, very slow at getting up that time. Bob, he got hit but good right in the chest. That rib cage is very tender, as we told you. Delayed handoff to Joe Delaney. Tripped up, stays on his feet, battles only back to maybe the line of scrimmage. Before the Steelers hold a team meeting on his body, there were about five black shirts there. Bob Galliano warms up. As we said at the top of the program, Bill Kenny was... Uh, not able to throw the football until actually Friday he could throw without pain. He has a very, very painful chest injury. He got hit in the sternum. He's wearing a flak jacket, but their protection does no good. It's a bruise, and it's going to take a week or so for him to get over it. Al Dixon out. Stan Rome in. Third wide receiver. Third and nine, 46-yard line. 2.20 to play in the first half. In motion, Henry Marshall. Kenny with time. Fires one. by Dwayne Woodruff. Fumble. Woodruff fumbles. Ball loose. Who's got it? Pittsburgh. I think Henry Marshall ran the wrong pattern. Not only did Kenny throw it to throw it right to Dwayne Woodruff of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but hitting right between the numbers. Expecting Marshall to turn in, he went out. Well, that is the second time the Chiefs have turned it over. Earlier, McKnight fumbled. And Lambert recovered it, ran it into Kansas City territory. This time, Kenny throws it right into the arms of Woodruff. And Woodruff, in the process of running it back, fumbled. But Lauren Taves was there, the outside linebacker, to retain possession for Pittsburgh. Let's watch it again. Nobody even close. Miscommunication somewhere. Woodruff playing in place of Ron Johnson, who injured an ankle early in the game and is done for the afternoon. 204 left and leading 12-10. Bradshaw goes back to work for the Steelers. To the air, that's no surprise. All kinds of time. Airs one out. A perfect strike. It's caught by Stallworth. Reverses his field. Picks up the block. And down at the 25-yard line. Uh, there's the depth of the patterns run by the Pittsburgh Steelers receivers. He was a good 16 or 17 yards deep. And normally linebackers don't drop that far. Therefore, Stallworth was standing wide open. That works for 23. We get the two-minute warning. Actually, there's 152 left in the first half. Steelers driving. Terry Bradshaw thus far, 9 of 15, 121 yards, one touchdown. That was an 18-yard strike to Lynn Swan. John Stallworth has caught four of those nine Bradshaw completions for a total of 70 yards. The two touchdowns for Pittsburgh, familiar names. Bradshaw to Swan and a scoring run by Franco Harris. An unfamiliar name, Dave Trout, missed the point after after both touchdowns. It's 12-10. Chiefs leading, rather, uh, Steelers leading the Chiefs. Looks like Bradshaw has called more than one play in the huddle. Hurry up offense here with 152 left in the first half. Steelers have two timeouts remaining. And a bullet is right on target to the tight end, Benny Cunningham. Cunningham was very close to the stick, very close to the first down, and I think he has it. He does. 
at the line of scrimmage now. They'll try to get another one off. They've got plenty of time. No reason to panic here. Just inside the 15-yard line and looking to build on a two-point lead. Bradshaw, rolling left, throwing, juggled and blocked by Lynn Swan. And that's the kind that normally will not elude Lynn Swan. That won't happen very often. Swanee is playing with a slight problem with his right hamstring. And as we mentioned earlier, Stallworth is also banged up a variety of ailments. And Chuck Noll wonders whether each can go all the way today. They both started, and they've been in there most of the way. But they're brittle at this point. Uh, we've uh, been down on Pittsburgh that they didn't play well last year. But do you realize that Swan and Stallworth together missed all 16 games last year? And they're a very, very big part of that, of that offense. If they keep them healthy, Pittsburgh is still a juggernaut. Cunningham goes wide to the right. They put Swan in a slot left, and Stallworth is wide left. Back Too much time. And Bradshaw. Terry looking for the end zone, throwing, broke it up. Excellent defensive play, but it might be interference. Burris, the rookie, broke it up, intended for Cunningham. If it's interference, it'll be first and goal at the one. That ball was snapped on 0-2 on the 30-second clock. Very, very close to being... Too much time. Defensive pass interference, number 34 in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the one yard line, first down. Lloyd Burris, the young, strong safety, the rookie. The difference between a great defensive play and a penalty only in eyelash. Strong arm Terry Bradshaw. Look the way he zips it in there. It's the backhand that gets the penalty. Not a rookie, third round draft choice out of Maryland. He'll learn. What do you think they'll give it to here, Bob? I think that Franco has an excellent chance to carry make it. Make an excellent coach. A grasp of the obvious doesn't hurt. They oh. fake it to Franco. They look to the end zone. Almost a one-handed catch by Benny Cunningham. It'll be second and goal. The fake to Bradshaw. Right behind Spaney, this ball is thrown away from the defensive back. A little wobbler gets his hand on. I can't blame Benny for not catching that one. That's a tough catch. Now would you give it to Harris? Sooner or later, they're going to have to. Minute 13 remaining. Bradshaw brings him up. They lead it 12-10. Tight formation, in motion, Grossman. with his second touchdown carry of the day. And on the field comes Mr. Trout. See if the third time is the charm. So Lynn Swan has caught a touchdown pass. Franco Harris has scored on the ground twice. After trailing 10-6, the Steelers now lead 18-10. Now let's see if Trout goes for the hat trick. Trout hooked the first one, shanked the second one. is the holder. Snap is good. Placement is good. Kick is good. <laughs> no flags down. Minute 10 to play first half. Steelers lead it. 19-10. Happy day Trout. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. This is the 20th time in his career that Franco Harris has scored two or more touchdowns in a single game. After the interception and return by Dwayne Woodrow, it took Terry Bradshaw just 54 seconds to engineer a five-play, 48-yard drive. And the Steelers lead at 19-10. Here is the kickoff by Trout. One of his shorter ones, but it still sends Carson a couple of yards into the end zone. Carlos Carson streaking for the sideline across the 20-25, skips out of bounds, 30-yard line. Now Kansas City has to put it up. They don't have a lot of time left. 104 in the first half. And a field goal would certainly help their attitude coming out for the second half. They've got to put it up in the air. This first half, Bob, has been a broadcaster's dream because virtually everything we pointed out as keys to the game has figured in it. The giveaway takeaway table for Kansas City. It has not worked their way by and large. They trail by nine. We said they needed that to have a chance for the upset. We mentioned Trout. He missed his first two, but he did nail his third. Kenny now calling a couple of plays. It'll be the hurry-up offense. 
He's got enough time. Just be patient. There's Gary Dunn going off with a bad leg. Stan Rohn left side. Marshall slot left. Smith wide right. Kenny with all kinds of time. Throw over the middle and deflected incomplete. Good coverage. Marshall, Rome, and J.T. Smith are all in there at the same time. And Pittsburgh rather unusual. Something you don't see uh, or you didn't see out of Pittsburgh a few years ago. That is a three-man rush. Unless I've missed it on a play or two, we have not seen Willie Scott, the number one draft choice out of South Carolina at all. Chiefs are carrying four tight ends. Al Dixon, the starter, who frankly confesses he was shocked to even make the club, let alone be the starter with all the young tight end talent they have. Marvin Harvey, third round draft choice, and the veteran Ed Beckman also there. Beckman, excellent blocker and special teams player. Okay. Lobs it out to Joe Delaney. Little stutter step move. Remind me of Joe Cribbs on that play. Now Dennis, a quick play. Excuse me. Dennis Dirk Winston in on the tackle. Go ahead, Trump. Now a quick play at the line of scrimmage. No, nope, they'll take the timeout. So that leaves them with two timeouts left and 44 seconds on the clock, trailing 19-10. A reminder, next Saturday on NBC's Baseball Game of the Week, the pennant-minded Expos meet the Cubs at Wrigley Field. And some of you will see the Yankees take on the Red Sox. So check your local listings for the game in your area. That's next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time right here on NBC Sports. A wacky baseball season, but potentially an exciting September. Just about everybody who has a franchise has a crack at the pennant. Well, I'm from Cincinnati. We don't like the split season. We finished a half game out in the first half, and we're incensed that we have the third best record in Major League Baseball and are four and a half back. I don't blame you. Theoretically, you could have the best record in all of baseball and not be one of eight teams to make the playoffs. And wouldn't that sit well with Dick Wagner and John McNamara and everybody out there in Cincinnati? No. Report on David Little, linebacker of the Pittsburgh Steelers, out with a concussion. Derek Gary Dunn also went off with uh, an ice bag on his leg. And Ron Johnson already off in a wheelchair with an ankle injury. Physical game out there. I knew I had a reason for retiring. We got a look at Terry Bradshaw just a moment ago. That missing tooth is replaced when uh, he goes on the tube to try and do TV pilots, isn't it? Yeah, he tried one called the Stalkers. It had miserable ratings with the exception of one specific area of the country, and that is the uh, north central area of Ohio. And why is that? Somewhere around Oberlin, Ohio, and I believe that's where Cliff Stout's family is from. They, they were all rooting for Terry to yes. launch a new career. Yes. Yes. Third down, we'll call it four. Smith left, Marshall right. Carlos Carson also in the ballgame. Three wide receivers. Kenny with time. Drills one right into the middle of some heavy coverage. First down. Henry Marshall made the catch, and it is a first down. So Marshall has had an excellent first half, which has included a touchdown catch. You know, it's interesting here. Kansas City has called timeout, but I think Carlos Carlos Carson called timeout, and I don't believe they wanted a timeout in that situation. we got to look at Marv Levy on the sideline. His demeanor is quite a bit different than the average NFL coach, wouldn't you say? Uh, yes, yeah, so is his education. He's a Phi Beta Kappa, a Kappa from a Co College in Iowa. Phi Beta Kappa? Phi, Phi Beta Kappa from Coe College in Iowa. Got that out. I believe it's an English history. Kind of difficult to get that up in that situation, but an awful nice gentleman. Assistant under George Allen for a while at Washington. Coached in Canada as well, and he has brought some Canadian players who he saw and was impressed by during his coaching time up north of the border. He's brought them to Kansas City and with good success. One of those guys was Eric Harris. I mentioned earlier that he came to Kansas City last year, signed a behemoth contract who that really upset an awful lot of the uh, players on the Kansas City Chiefs, but but last year, uh, Harris pulled his own weight. He was the uh, rookie of the year, if you will. He played three years in Canada, but he had seven interceptions, which was second on the ball club behind Gary Barbaro. He has pulled his weight. Nick Lowry, the place kicker, and a good one, is another example, player up in Canada that uh, Levy brought down. He had to be good to take the job away from Jan Stenerud. He was everything they expected and more a year ago. All right, now the Chiefs have one timeout left. The Steelers have two, which at this point is academic. 19-10, Pittsburgh in front, 34 seconds to play. On first down from the 45 of Kansas City. Kenny drops back and looks. He has time. And he finally... 
Kelly unloads, and the catch is made by J.T. Smith, and Smith is brought down at the 40th Pittsburgh. They are nearing Lowry's range. He kicked a 57-yarder a year ago. They need a completion here. He's They've got, got the completion. Again, J.T. Smith. And an excellent catch that time. The clock is stopped with six seconds, and they'll get Lowry on the field. Well done. Well done by Kansas City. Very impressive. This drive started at uh, their own 31-yard line. And three points at this juncture of the first half will do an awful lot to lift the Kansas City Chiefs. They've played very well. And despite the encouragement that Trout has received from his teammates, his coach, and the crowd, those two missed extra points could very well figure in the outcome of this game. Rupp kneels just about at the 30-yard line. It's about a 40-yard attempt. Lowry was deadly accurate from this distance. Three of four between 40 and 49. Seven of nine between 30 and 39 a year ago. Overall made 20 of 26 field goal tries. The snapper, though, is Todd Thomas out of North Dakota. The rookie fifth-round draft choice. Very, very important that this is a good snap. They cut Charlie Ane. That opened up the job for Thomas. awaits the snap. It's a good one. The ball is down. Lowry's kick is away. Plenty long enough and good from 40. Wow. That was a 60-yard field goal. That thing went over the wall. The clock reads double zero as the kick by Lowry splits the upright. A very interesting first half comes to a close. And the score. The Pittsburgh Steelers 19. The Kansas City Chiefs 13. will return to Free River Stadium in Pittsburgh in just a minute. Halftime in Pittsburgh. Bob Costas with Bob Trumpy. The Chiefs are just a touchdown back, Trump. I think they have every bit to, uh, an awful lot of information to celebrate in the halftime. They're playing very good. Uh, Pittsburgh has got some injuries now with Ron Johnson. I uh, would expect Kansas City to come out and throw the ball a little more than they have uh, off the performance of Kenny in the last 34 seconds. At the field goal at the end of that half was going to help them a great deal. On the other hand, Pittsburgh's got to be worrying. Their offense is not really doing that good, and their defense is once again allowing an awful lot of yards to the pass. Time by a double. We're just getting started underway in the 81 season, week number one. It's a big doubleheader day on NBC. A lot of early returns are in. Let's try to get you caught up on just what is happening around the league. Game going on at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. There, the Steelers are taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, who many, many people believe have the best young talent in all of football. The Steelers out in front of the Chiefs by a score of 19-13. That ball game, of course, at the half. Last year, first time in nine years, Steelers have missed out on the playoffs and they got a big turnover early in the ball game. This is McKnight losing the handle on the ball and who else? Number 58, Jack Lambert comes up with it to set the Steelers up in position for their first score of the ball game. You've seen this act before. Terry Bradshaw up top to Lynn Swan. 19 yards. Rookie Dave Trout missed the point after. It was 6-0 Pittsburgh. Chiefs came back. This is Jerry Kenny hitting number 89. Henry Marshall with the score. Chiefs managed to take the lead at 13-6 before the Steelers came back. Watch the lead Brown here of Larry Brown. Lead block clears the way for Franco Harris and a seven-yard touchdown. That brought them to within 13-12. And then another touchdown, this one again by Franco Harris from two yards out, made it 19-13. Back at Three River Stadium, Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be receiving to start this second half. They are down by just a touchdown as they put together something. One, two, three, lickety split. Bill Kenny got them the field goal just before uh, time expired at the end of the first half. They're right in this ball game. Every region to be encouraged. They've gained 191 yards against Pittsburgh. Uh, Kansas City's allowed Pittsburgh 201 yards, and you take away a couple of the turnovers, Kansas City's right in the game. Those missed extra points mm -hmm. by Dave Trout, I believe, are going to loom very, very large at the end of this football game, Bob. He missed two out of three in that first half, the first two that he has ever tried in the National Football League. Hooked the first one, shanked the second one. Uh, the third one was true. But I repeat, uh, it seems uh, those things have a way of coming back on you. Uh, Pittsburgh has not played particularly well in this first half. They've taken advantage of some mistakes by Kansas City and scored. Franco Harris is having an excellent day. So is Terry Bradshaw. But I imagine Chuck Noll was a little upset uh, with his team's performance in the first half. He needs a lot more out of his key players, people like Green. Lambert's already done his job, but Bradshaw and Franco Harris has got to continue. So now Dave Trout will kick off. Now that has not been any area of difficulty for him. 11 of 14 preseason kicks went into the end zone, and all of his boots have reached at least the goal line in the first half. 
but the point after touchdowns have been a nightmare. First half stats. Chiefs 13 first downs, rather Steelers 13, but the Chiefs 9. The overall yardage is fairly even. You know, Franco Harris has 48 of the Steelers' 56 rushing yards so far. Down by six. The Chiefs receive. Carlos Carson thinks about it for a second and says, I'll stay right here. Bradshaw to Swan for a touchdown. Harris a couple of touchdown runs. Trout misses two of the three-point efforts. Kenny to Henry Marshall for a touchdown. Lowry hits the PAT. Lowry also connects on two field goals. 19-13 as we start the second half. Marshall out wide to the left. J.T. Smith is in a slot on the left. Big series right here for Kansas City. If they can get the ball down the field, keep it for a while, they may pose some real problems for Pittsburgh. The back set up in the eye had not, and McKnight, and the first man through had not, gets two, maybe three yards before being banged to the turf by Jack Lambert. In case you joined us late, worth repeating, Bill Kenny is injured. He has a bad elbow, a bad ankle, and a very, very severely bruised chest, which affects his passing. And his backup is a young man named Bob Galliano of Utah State, 12th round draft choice, 1981. They must keep Kenny healthy, but their number one priority is to win the football game, and that means throwing it. Shifting out of the slot and now in motion is the tight end Al Dixon. Flags fly. Kenny is belted as he unloads, and let's see how they unsort this. Joe Green. I think Dixon turned up the field early. It's always a tendency on the offense's part. Illegal motion. Here's Joe Green on Tom Condon. And it looked like it might have been a screen. Condon was releasing, but... The Steelers last year with 18 sacks down from 49 a year before. So far have one sack today. Third down. That sack by Jack Lambert. That's Jim Tunney, the referee. Once again, the rest of his crew. Pat Harder is the umpire. Sid Seaman, the headlines. Been Dick McKenzie, the line judge. Pat Knight, the back judge. Gil Mace, the side judge. Johnny Greer is the field judge. Marv Levy and his assistants on the KC sideline. Number 83 back there with a the headband is one of their top draft choices, tight end Marvin Harvey. Whoops. Some movement along the line, no flags. They need nine yards. They've got that and then some. A leaping catch is made by J.T. Smith. Anthony Washington, the rookie, was there on the coverage. Washington replacing Ron Johnson out with a bad ankle, and he's out for the day. That was Joe, or L.C. Greenwood, that jumped offside. Of course, they'll decline the play, the penalty take the reception first down Kansas City Anthony Washington number two draft choice out of Fresno State and their number one choice Keith Gary went north of the border to Canada and there is Washington arriving late on the coverage Washington says he has learned a lot so far in his rookie season and the first thing he has learned about the Pittsburgh Steelers do not mention last year <laughs> I would imagine that that young man might be tested severely right now they have Dwayne Woodruff at that corner Washington out of the ballgame at the 43-yard line of Kansas City. The handoff is to Ted McKnight. He breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and he turns it into a four-yard gain. Lauren Taves eventually stops him. Ran right out of the grasp of 75, Joe Green. Things have changed a lot in Kansas City now that we're up to the fourth season of the Marv Levy regime, and he just signed a new three-year contract, so he'll be around a while longer. But remember when he first started out, Bob, it took a lot of guts to go with a wing tee. He took a lot of heat about that. And he very seldom threw the football, tried to bring Mr. Steve Fuller along very, very slowly. You, I agree with you. You have to admire his, his guts. Quick play fake and a toss incomplete. Intended for McKnight out of the backfield. Something the Chiefs have never established, though, is any kind of breakaway threat in the last couple of years out of that backfield. They had hoped that McKnight would be the guy. Two years ago, 1979, he provided that for them a little bit, but uh, not last year or so far today. In talking to the people in Kansas City, they're delighted with the uh, progress of one Joe Delaney. Uh, he seems to be a breakaway threat. Now on third down six, Robin Cole goes out. And Anthony Washington is in the ballgame. Three wide receivers is Carlos Carson. Blitz. For the Chiefs on the blitz. He gets it away. The He's catch gone. is made. Look out. This is going to be six. Taking off Carlos Carson. Touchdown. 
Kenny is down. Quarterback Bill Ray Kenny is Whitley down. Quickly is popping up. He was writhing in pain after being hit. Carlos Carson on a 53-yard touchdown catch. The Pittsburgh Steelers had an all-out blitz at that time, including Mel Blunt. Mel Blunt's the guy who got the hit on Bill Kenny. You'll watch. They have five defensive backs. Watch from the top of the screen, 47, right at the end of the play. There he is, Mel Blunt. And, of course, that's the side that Carson comes from. Henry Marshall, a good job, a good block on uh, J.T. Thomas. And Carson shows his speed, outrunning Mr. Washington. Whoa, my goodness. So now the game is tied, and Kenny has his second touchdown pass of the day. Nick Lowry with an opportunity to put the Chiefs in front. Kenny, as you can see, being helped to his feet. He took a shot just as he delivered, but he walked off under his own power. Grupp spots it. Lowry boots it. It's there. The Chiefs lead it by a score of 20 to 19 in a game which under ordinary circumstances would be 21-20. Steelers will be right back. The Pittsburgh Steelers have won 9 of 12 season openers in the Chuck Knoll regime. And here at Three Rivers, they are 9 and 2 in home openers. But they trail here by a score of 20 to 19. Kenny appears to be all right. You know, it's interesting that uh, two touchdowns scored by Kansas City have both been on broken coverages by the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive backs. Worth repeating, last year ranked 22nd. 53-yard pass to Carson. The Steelers, for what it's worth, were 2-2 two two in preseason. They beat Cleveland and the Giants. They lost to Philadelphia and Dallas. The Chiefs were 1-3. They beat Chicago. They lost to Washington, St. Louis, and Miami. Speaking of Miami, they are the opponent coming up on Thursday night. That's a quick turnaround for the Steelers. And the kickoff is grabbed by Larry Anderson. Anderson reverses his field, finds some daylight. Fumble. He fumbles the football, and let's see Kansas City it. has it. Oh, yeah, they've got the ball. Stripped right out of his arms. Oh, my goodness. So things turn the Chiefs way from the very outset of this third quarter. We've played just two minutes. They've already scored a touchdown, and now they've got the ball. It's a personal foul being indicated against Kansas City, but it may have come after the recovery. It'll probably cost them yardage, but not the ball. It looked like Billy Jackson, number 43, was the man who came out of the pile with the ball. Jim Tunney, the referee, talks it over with his crew. Let's watch Larry Anderson. It was a good return. He just didn't like the ending. Gifted kickoff returner. Set some Super Bowl records. Let's see who puts his hand in there on the ball or what happens. Beckman, 85. The special teams captain and a very, very good player. No doubt that Kansas City has possession. The question would be whether or not... Or is there? Here comes Terry Bradshaw. There is some question. Before the fumble. Personal foul, number 40 on the kicking team during the run back, resulting in the change of possession. The ball will revert to the receiving team, Pittsburgh. Kansas City penalized first down, Pittsburgh's ball. Well, not only does it cost the Chiefs the ball, it also cost them a few additional yards tacked down on a penalty. You're looking at Billy Jackson, who recovered the fumble, which went for naught. The penalty goes against Mike Williams, number 40, for the personal foul. Now, obviously, Kansas City had possession of the ball, but the penalty took place before the fumble, and therefore, Pittsburgh's ball plus the 15 yards. They dodged a bullet there. From the Steeler, 43. They trail it by a point at 20 to 19. Jim Tunney tries to placate some angry Chiefs. The Chiefs, by the way, went 80 yards in six plays, took just a minute 40 to do it, as they grab the lead 2019 with six seconds to go. In the first half, they trailed 19 to 10. The give is to Sidney Thornton and not much, if anything. Let's check other games. The Dolphins are putting it on the Cardinals. 10.08 to play third quarter in St. Louis. Miami 20 and St. Louis nothing. Jimmy Cephalo has just caught a 47-yard pass from David Woodley. The second time those two have combined for a touchdown pass. Earlier, they covered 22 yards, and Uwe von Schaman has also kicked a couple of field goals. 20 zip. Dallas leads Washington in the third, 17-7. 7.55 to play third quarter there. 
backpedaling and throwing. Stallworth with the catch. Hit by Eric Harris, but too late. Let's see where they'll spot it. Around the 45-yard line of Kansas City, it'll be a first down. A simple play. John Stallworth just down the field with his great speed. Eric Harris has to respect it. You see, drives Harris off and just stops and comes back for the football. Almost an unstoppable with a man of his talent. Let's see who's getting taped up here on the Kansas City sideline. Bill Kansick. Reserve linebacker Kansick. Play fake, deep pump, Bradshaw unloads. Smallworth again. Near the 20-yard line before he's driven back another first down. Once again, the depth of the patterns. Gary Barber will want to tackle. Bradshaw with a pump fake to Swan on the right side. And Stallworth is a good 19 to 20 yards down the field. Now, what that does to the Kansas City defense is distorts the distance between defensive backs and linebackers. You see the linebackers up front. Look how open he is. There is a big space there when you can stretch the defense that much. In the Dallas-Washington game, with the Cowboys leading 17-7 early in the third, Danny White has thrown two touchdown passes, one to Billy Joe Dupree, another to Drew Pearson. Raphael Septien also has a 29-yard field goal. Joe Theismann hit Joe Washington for a touchdown, the only Washington score. And let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching WDAF TV4, Kansas City. Five yards for Hawthorne on first down. Second and five from the 15-yard line. Clock moving. Ten minutes and 30 seconds to play quarter number three. We're riding a seesaw here. It's the Chiefs' turn to lead, 20 to 19. But the Steelers are driving. John Stallworth has caught six. Terry Bradshaw passes for 107 yards. On second and five, Bradshaw dropping back. Out of the pocket. Over the middle, and it's dropped. Hawthorne had it in his hands as Bradshaw drilled it in between the coverage. Bradshaw now 12 of 20, 167 yards. And that one should have been caught. Hit him right in the stomach. Well, if they don't get five on this play, we might see Dave Trout try his first field goal. Ta-da! Always could be excitement. A, another adventure. Dick Vermeil is 10-0 against the New York Giants as the Eagle coach, and it looks like he's on his way to 11 and 17 break. Jaworski to Rodney Parker for 55 yards early in the third quarter. They had led 10 3 at halftime. Third and five for Pittsburgh. Interference. Is it interference? It is interference. Cunningham was the target. Gary Barbaro, the free safety, drilled him. It'll be first and goal, Pittsburgh. I don't know what else you can do with a guy who is 6'5 and weighs 260 pounds. You'll see the contact. You know, he hardly looks 260, Trump. He is the best proportion 260 you'd ever want to see. That's the kind you want to see if you're a football coach. You don't want to see a sloppy 260. I'd like to stand him alongside Noah Jackson of the Bears. Here we got Cunningham listed at 260. They list Noah Jackson at 265, and I'll be darned if there's only five pounds difference between those two guys. There's probably five inches waistline difference, too. in the third by a score of 21 nothing a lot of people think atlanta might go to the super bowl from the nfc so New much Orleans just trying to go somewhere other than one and 15. excuse me so much for bum phillips cowboy hat and boots is that at atlanta i guess so if it is then the bum's wearing the hat but he doesn't wear the hat indoors right? mama doesn't like that that is not proper etiquette so he will not wear the hat at the superdome bradshaw second and goal Crowd and broken up intended for Benny Cunningham. Do I see another flag? I do. Could be first and goal at the one. That's twice that's happened, and it is first and goal at the one. Pass interference, number 52, defense. Thomas Howard, once again covering Benny Cunningham. argues his case to no avail. 
Cunningham is now joined by Randy Grossman in a two tight end alignment for the Steelers. First and goal of the one. I believe he can talk strategy. Rare is probably his best chance now. Four cracks to get a yard. They ask Hawthorne to get it. He carries people in with him. Touchdown. Hawthorne, the third-year man from Baylor, takes it in, and the Steelers have jumped back in front. That's twice that that has happened to Kansas City. Interference in or near the end zone, resulting in the ball being placed in the one-yard line. Pittsburgh scores once in the first half, now this one. Now Trout tries to hit the 500 mark on his point after he tries. He has missed two of his first three. That's Craig Cole with the punter who will hold it. The snap is there. Look out. He slipped it in the right side. They only count how many, Bob, not how. With a foot or so to spare, Trout connects. It is 26-20 Steelers, 9-27 left, third quarter. Watch again as Dave Trout adds the extra point. Close. Five, five, much. five six, and 165 pounds. Great shot by our NBC folks. Sunshine overhead at Three Rivers. We come back here long about November or December. I remember this day fondly. This is an uncustomarily short kick by Trout. Fielded by Mike Williams. But the result is just fine for Pittsburgh. He's brought down shy of the 15, but a flag flies in the process. The Steelers went 57 yards in seven plays. Their drive consumed Stop three minutes, 33 up. seconds. Two important pass interference Third calls in. helped them. And this is against Kansas City as well. That's going to make it first and 93. Bill Kenny comes back out. He is thrown for two scores. 26-20, the Steelers by six. 9-17 to play in the third quarter. Must be careful here. This is where Pittsburgh has made its living. On that minus side of the field. This is where they blitz. This is where they run the double roll-up zone. This is where they make it very, very tough on you as an offensive team to do business. Look at the penalties. Steelers just one itty-bitty infraction for five. Chiefs have been murdered by flags. Dixon, the tight end in motion. McKnight slips away. Could have been worse. Got a couple of yards. Injury, I believe, to Tom Condon. Number 65. Well, he slipped right out of the arms of L.C. Greenwood. No, I believe the injury is to Brad Buddy. He's up. But he's hurt his knee slightly. Good run by McKnight. This is where Pittsburgh is tough. Buddy's walking it off and waving the trainer away, but now they're making him come to the sideline. We have nine minutes and three seconds to play in quarter number three. It's second down and eight coming up for Kansas City when we return to three rivers. Brad Buddy didn't want to come out, but obviously he requires attention along the sidelines. Number one draft choice two years ago. Taping his ankle. Not a knee injury. closes the gap on the Colts, 16-14, they're in the third. Actually, the Patriots had gone in front, 14-13, when Steve Grogan hit Carlos Pennywell from 22 yards out, but Mike Wood has just drilled a 35-yard field goal in the third quarter, and Baltimore has gone in front again, 16-14. The Chiefs drew him off sides, it'll cost him five. Charlie Getty. For 77, half the distance of the goal line, still second down. Charlie Getty is the guilty party. Mark Mosley has hit a 42-yard field goal with 5.57 to play in the third quarter. And Washington is to within a touchdown of the Cowboys, 17-10. Second down, 13, ball at the four. Three wide receivers, two of them on the right side. The pitch is to Hadnot, trying to sweep left. Hadnot turns the corner and is banged out of bounds by J.T. Thomas. J.T. Thomas is an amazing story. Back in 1978, sat out the entire season with a rare blood disorder. It was feared he would never play again. He's back and starting. There were a lot of people saying prior to this camp for the Steelers that Mr. Thomas would not make the team at all. Good play selection here. Good block by McKnight on Robin Cole. 
had not. Big guy, 245 pounds, rolling down the sideline there. Third and about a yard. They picked up 11 on that play. Third and a long one. Willie Scott, the number one draft choice, is in now. As an extra tight end, there is Beckman of 85 in motion, and they did not get it. They did not get it. Billy Jackson, the rookie from Alabama, ran smack into a stone wall. And for one play, at least the steel curtain very much alive. Mel Blunt in there, along with Bob Coors, John Panasak. They can make it tough for you down there, those black hats. That hurts. That hurts Kansas City. If they could have kept the ball a little longer, had a little better field position, they need a good punt out of Bob Grubb here. Now, here's Bob Grubb. Made the Pro Bowl as a rookie in 1979. Good stats again last year. After being cut early in his career by the Jets, the Redskins, and the Bengals, he went out to the West Coast to see Ray Pelfrey, the so-called punt doctor. We've got the fight doctor at NBC, Ferdy Pacheco. Well, Ray Pelfrey is the punt doctor. And he operated on Grubb's technique, turned him into a Pro Bowler. High snap from Todd Thomas, the rookie. That's what they Grubb need right gets it away there. in real good shape. Smith backtracking and can't bring it back down at the 35. Phil Kansick got down there and made the tackle after a 50-yard boomer by Bob Grubb. That helps Kansas City's chances. Good punt. He adjusted very quickly to this snap that's a little bit to the left. And then when that's two-step two delivery, booms it. I don't think I'd want that job. Catching punts, look at him carrying the ball like a loaf of bread. Got to tuck it in. Smith, of course, a very valuable property as a wide receiver as well. And that is true of both these clubs. Two guys named Smith. J.T. Smith, starting wide receiver, great punt return man. Jim Smith, excellent receiver. And they also put him back there on punts. So they have valuable players in jeopardy every time that ball goes into the air. Franco Harris stopped at the line of scrimmage and possibly a yard behind it. Mike Bell along with the two. Interesting story about Mike Bell. Last year, he underwent bicep surgery. He has a twin brother playing for the Seattle Seahawks. When Mike Bell hurt his bicep, his brother in Seattle felt it. This year, Mike's brother Mark had a knee injury. Mike was lifting weights in Kansas City, and the moment that Mark Bell was hurt, his brother Mike in Kansas City felt it. Do, 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 do. Twin brothers. Where's Paul Rod Carl Sterling? Sagan. Yes. We're in the zone, folks. Bradshaw dropping and looking and throwing. If you give him that much time, he's going to find somebody, and it's Jim Smith. Seventeen-yard pickup. Excellent protection by Pittsburgh. That offensive line, four years. Webster, Corson, Brown, Wolfley, Kolb. Look at Kolb on Bell. Kolb, one of the real strong men in the NFL. Bench presses 550 pounds. Good catch by Cunningham. Oh, excuse me. Good catch by Smith. Smith's numbers a year ago, impressive indeed. As a replacement. Nine touchdown catches, second to John Jefferson for San Diego in the AFC. Jefferson still holding out with the Chargers. Bradshaw again. This time there's pressure. He gets rid of it, and it's picked off. He threw it smack into the arms of Eric Harris, and Harris down the sideline and deep into Pittsburgh territory at the 35-yard line. I don't think Terry Bradshaw saw Eric Harris at all. It was a zone defense. Watch Art still 67. No pressure on Bradshaw, but they're still in there. Boy, this is a bad choice by Terry Bradshaw. He threw it right to Eric Harris. Eric Harris, who a year ago had seven interceptions, including six in consecutive games, one each six straight weeks, made his move, hung back late, stepped in front of Stallworth, picked it off, tacked on a good return. I think Mike Bell's pressure on John Cope had his hands up in his face. I don't think Bradshaw ever saw Harris. From the 35 yard line with 629 on the clock. Had not tries to sweep and gets maybe five yards before being driven out by JT Thomas at the 30 yard line. That story you told about 
Mike and Mark Bell really is something out of the Twilight Zone. One guy I gets hit. hurt and the other guy feels it. Yeah, 2,500 miles away. Speaking of Seattle, the Seahawks lead your old club, the Bengals, 21 to 13. 11:32 to play third quarter. Seattle 21, Cincinnati 13. Willie Scott, the Chiefs' number one pick, wearing number 81, is in tight on the right side. Second down five. Kenny with a play fit. Lots of time. Steps up into the pocket. Oh! Ooh, dropped right in the hands. J.T. Smith, I believe. Yeah, that's J.T. I think he's got a cramp. This should have been a pass completion. Well thrown by Kenny. Good protection. You'll see J.T. Smith come across the middle, underneath the defensive backs. Oh, my goodness. That certainly would have helped. All right, now trailing 26-20. The Chiefs, who have converted on 7 of 11 third down opportunities thus far, face third and five from the 30-yard line of Pittsburgh. Robin Cole out, Anthony Washington in as a nickelback. Dwayne Woodruff is already playing on almost every down because Ron Johnson hurt his ankle early in the game and won't return. Three wide receivers for Kansas City. Kenny looking, pumping, scrambling. Needs five yards, fumbles as he's hit. Ball's just lying there. Who's got it? They may whistle this down and give it to the Chiefs, and if so, Kenny got the first down. They're going to count him down back where he was initially touched by the defensive lineman of the Pittsburgh Steelers and counted as a sack. Well, that is the quickest of all quick whistles. Interesting whistle. Interesting the whistle. Control of the quarterback, fourth down. I will tell you this, though. There are times prior to a football game, as a head coach, you go to the officials and say, we got a hurt quarterback. Give us a quick whistle, will you? We want to keep him protected. Look at the push up the middle. At that point right there, they call him a sack. Now, we're talking about a 55-yard field goal attempt. Lowry has this kind of range. Thomas will snap it. Grupp will spot it. Lowry meets it. Wide to the right. And I don't think it was quite long enough anyway. So the ball will belong to Pittsburgh at their 36-yard line. Five minutes and 42 seconds to play third quarter. Still the Steelers by six. Late in the third quarter at St. Louis, O.J. Anderson, a one-yard touchdown run for the Cardinals. They're on the board. They trail Miami by a score of 20 to 7. Woodley has hit Cephalo for a couple of scoring tosses for Miami. Bradshaw, first down handoff to Franco Harris, who's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Excellent pursuit by Charles Jackson from that outside linebacker spot. Kansas City defense has played a fine, fine game today. But then that's the strength of this football team, their defense. We mentioned Miami leading the Cardinals 20-7. to On Thursday night, the Steelers have to go down to Miami and play Don Shula's Dolphins. That is a tough turnaround against anybody, let alone that difficult an opponent. And, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers have some players with some age on them, and you can't physically be ready to play in, on four days rest. It's impossible. No gain, last play, second and ten. Clock moving exactly five minutes. Mix up on the handoff, ball loose. Kansas City. Chiefs think they have it. Look at Chuck Noel. And they do. Greg Ken Hawthorne. Kramer. Ken Kramer, number 91, with the recovery. Greg Hawthorne and Franco Harris in there. They ran the old cross buck. Bradshaw put it in between them. And a guy in a red shirt, Ken Kramer, came up with a football. He's upset. These are not pleasantries, which Chuck Noel is exchanging with Greg Hawthorne. And I must admit, I spent a lot of time on that turf out there here at Three River Stadium. And I, we're, we're going to Pittsburgh with this telecast. This is nowhere close to the fearsome football team that the Pittsburgh Steelers were two years ago. Nowhere close. Mental mistakes more than physical mistakes are killing them today. Bill Kenny for the injured Steve Fuller, 12 of 22, 218 yards, two touchdowns so far. Hand off to Hadnot, inside carry. Had not bust to the 28-yard line in the grasp of Jack Lambert. Kansas City cannot blow this opportunity. They missed the last one on the interception. They have now got to get the ball in the end zone. Not for three points, for seven points. See the hand signals on the sideline. Looks like a, a squeeze bunt coming here, Bob. I'm not sure. 
Four and a half minutes to play third quarter. Steelers 26, Chiefs 20. Second and seven from the 28-yard line of Pittsburgh. Willie Scott, the tight end, splits wide to the left. Smith wide right, Marshall in the slot right. They pitch it to Hatnot. Hatnot takes it off left tackle, squirms for extra yardage. L.C. Greenwood eventually with the tackle. They'll be left with third and short. Atlanta continues to put it on. The New Orleans Saints, it's 27-0 now at Atlanta. Markowski to Alfred Jenkins, 25-yard touchdown pass. They missed the point after. That's a rude awakening for George Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner last year out of South Carolina. And for Bum Phillips as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints. South Carolina's line might be better than the Saints line. Oh. Are we on in New Orleans? Third and two from the 23-yard line. And he's going to throw for it. Pumping. Incomplete. Woodruff there on the coverage. And all over J.T. Smith. What do you think of that call, Trump? Third and I two. Th I, I don't know. They've been running the ball when the, I think they should be passing it. They picked on the uh, young man out of Louisville, Woodruff, there. And I might also add it in this situation, fourth down and three yards to go. Can uh, Grupp throw the football? I'm not sure I'd, uh, I'd go for the field goal here. Grupp kneels at the 32, a 42-yard attempt for Lowry. Hit on two of three tries thus far. High snap, but he gets it down, and Lowry gets it off and hits it. But well, this guy is just too tough. So the clock stops with three minutes and 21 seconds to play in the third quarter. And the Chiefs are within a field goal at 26 23. To check on the scoreboard, Baltimore lengthens their lead on New England. 22 14 is the score. And the Colts, who are 0-4 in preseason and who have been a patsy for New England in recent years, giving Ron Earhart's, Earhart's boys all they can handle, 22-14. And if there is a more enigmatic club year in and year out in the NFL than the New England Patriots, I'd like to see who it is. Onside kick, a little chippy. They tried to bounce it in between, but it's scooped up by Pittsburgh. Johnny Dearden picked it up. Johnny Dearden, number 87, and he gets out to the 35. Not strictly an onside kick, more like a nine iron. He tried to chip it in between and then hope the Chiefs could outrace them to the loose ball. Story of this football game, Terry Bradshaw with an interception. Pittsburgh Steelers have had five fumbles on the day, lost two. Johnny Dearden, who averted disaster for Pittsburgh on that last play by picking the ball up, is the only Steeler on their present roster who has played for another NFL team. He has played for both Kansas City and Houston. Franco Harris, good gain on first down. Hart still makes the tackle. It appears that Pittsburgh right now may go back to their bread and butter, and that is give it to Franco Harris. He's been their most consistent back over the last 10 or 11 years and grind it out here for a while. Eat some of the time off the clock. 2.50 remaining in the third quarter. He got five on that last carry. Something else about Johnny Dearden. He was cut by Winnipeg of the Canadian League before Chuck Noll picked him up in Pittsburgh. My question is, how can he get cut by a Winnipeg and make the Steelers? Fumble! Fumble! Franco Harris! Everybody's got a crack at it. Kansas City, that's six fumbles, lost three. The Chiefs believe they have it, and they do. My goodness. Last year, you know, Franco Harris had all kinds of problems hanging on to the football. Let's it, watch the hit and then the recovery. And it appears that Kansas City, most of the day, Mano Maliuna? Yeah, Mano Maliuna was the man who hit him. Now, Bell has a crack at it, but it will elude him, I believe, and Jackson will come in. Harris takes a crack at it and misses it, and Charles Jackson eventually reaches out and grabs it. My goodness. So that's Jackson's second fumble recovery, and the first one, he tacked a long run onto it. There's Mr. Knoll, not happy with what he is seeing. And tell he you is what, he could put together a film of more mistakes in this one game than he might have seen in half a season back three or four years ago. This is not what he had in mind for the 1981 season opener. Although the Steelers lead 26-23, lest we forget, this is the rookie, Joe Delaney. And Delaney with big yardage. J.T. Thomas eventually brings him down. He is inside the 30 of Pittsburgh. 
see what the 49ers and Lions are doing. They are tied at 10-10. They are early in the fourth quarter. 10-10 at the Silverdome in Pontiac. I wonder if the Kansas City Chiefs are suffering from leg cramps. We've had J.T. Smith go out, Henry Marshall go out with a full hamstring. And now Delaney on the sideline, it appears, with a leg cramp. Delaney got first down yardage on the carry from the 27-yard line. Inside two minutes to play in the third quarter. Impressive numbers for Bill Kenny. Pitch back to Ted McKnight. Follows his blockers, tries to sweep, but Woodruff fought the block off and then shoved him out of bounds. Now is when Pittsburgh comes up with a big defensive play right here. A blitz, whether it be Mel Blunt or Dwayne Woodruff or Jack Lambert from the middle linebacker spot, somebody will try to disrupt what Kansas City has in mind right here. Characteristically, that's what they do. See what happens. 10-6 Chiefs after one. 19-13 Steelers at the half. Chiefs have scored 10 times, and the Steelers with a touchdown here in the third quarter. 26-23 in favor of Pittsburgh. Second and seven from the 24 of the Steelers. A minute 42 showing. McKnight again slices through that tiny hole and across the 20-yard line, close to first down yardage, before Jack Lambert gets credit for the tackle. Philadelphia walloping the Giants 24-3 at the Meadowlands. They're early in the fourth quarter. Kansas City's offensive line doing a fine, fine job up the middle. All day long, they've been able to move Pittsburgh not at will, but when they need the big yardage. Now, third down and about a yard and a half. And this is a must conversion. I believe they're now 7-12 and 12 in third down conversions. They got to get this one. Scott, the tight end on the left side. Marshall, slot right. Smith, wide right. Backs, Hadnot and McKnight are split behind Kenny. They give it to McKnight. Needs a yard and a half. Has it. Inside the 15. Fumble, I believe, after the whistle. Joe Green picked it up. Doesn't count. First down, Kansas City. seem to be picking on that left side behind Herkenhoff and, and Buddy or Simmons now in there. You see Jack Redney with a good block on Fanazak, 76. And also a good kick out had not on Mel Blunt. McKnight able to turn the corner and get the first down. At the 14-yard line, the time running out of the third quarter, inside 20 seconds. 26-23. Scott motion on the play as the handoff goes to McKnight and McKnight sheds tacklers and battles down near the eight yard line pick up of six on first down well, they're doing a good job on those two guys up the middle that time it was a trap on 76 Vanisak and they let Joe Green come across there's nobody there to stop them and that's the end of the third quarter with the score Pittsburgh 26 Kansas City 23 we'll be right back after these messages from the local station touch with you on action Four news Jack Rudney with a man on his nose, watch the job they do. Green is handled by Tom Condon. The trap on Banasek and L.C. Greenwood. Getty handles Jack Lambert on a great job. McKnight up through the middle, six yards and a first down. And anytime you've got a defensive back making the tackle in a short yardage situation, you're in trouble. And we start the fourth quarter. Marshall goes to the right. Smith on the other side. Second and three. Ball at the seven-yard line. Chiefs trail by three. Kenny with the handoff to McKnight. And McKnight has a first down. It'll be first and goal for Kansas City. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see Kansas City come back with the same trap play on this particular down. Right now. Marv Levy discusses his options. Meanwhile, Raphael Septien connects from 42. And at the end of three, Dallas leads the Redskins at Washington 20 to 10. At Chicago... Green Bay, in the second quarter, leads the Bears 13 to nothing. Those teams played two weird games last year. You recall the overtime game where a Chester Marco field goal was blocked and wound up in Chester's arms. He ran it in for a game-winning score. And then the next time they met, Chicago won 61 to 7. This time, Green Bay leads at 13 zip in the second. First and goal, Kansas City, as they look to regain the lead. Out of the tight formation, McKnight, touchdown! Power sweep. Student body left. Great job. Finally, those four tight ends that Kansas City has on their roster came in handy. Excellent job by the Kansas City offensive line. Watch once again. Oh, Coors got folded. 
see Robin Cole had not with a great block on Woodruff and McKnight sneaks in big touchdown for Kansas City obviously now Lowry to try and have the 30th point and obviously this is big too because it would put it out of reach for a tying field goal this could make it 30-26 Lowry has never missed a point after touchdown as a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. We have 14 minutes and 7 seconds to play in this ball game at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Chiefs lead it 30-26. This is an interesting one. Exciting and interesting both. Three River Stadium is very quiet. Anderson awaits the kick by Lowry, which settles into his arms at the 2. to the 20 and not much more than that. Bob, all the running backs, everybody who handles the ball now for Pittsburgh because of the five fumbles, or six fumbles and three lost, everybody's handling the football like it's an egg. They're not running with reckless abandon, which is what you need on the field. They're afraid of the fumble. And now the crowd tries to get behind the Steeler offense. Lynn Swan checks back in. He has spent some time on the sidelines, bothered by that hamstring pull. Stallworth wide left, Swan is wide right. Hawthorne and Harris are the backs, and the give is to Greg Hawthorne. Hawthorne to the 25, a gain of four. Frank Manumalayuna on the stop. Kansas City's defense has held its own today. Very impressive performance. What might that be, you suppose? That might be a terrible truck, as opposed to, to a terrible towel. I had to ask. Second and six from the 25. 13-20 remaining in the game. Hawthorne. Hawthorne's got a first down, or at least he's very close to it, as he lunges across the 30. First down. That's a play they have not used very much at all in this ball game. No, they have not. They have not featured Greg Hawthorne running the ball. It's been primarily Franco Harris, but they've got to go back to establish something in this fourth quarter. If they don't, nothing else is going to work. They've got to have one play to get them out of trouble. But Hawthorne in a wing, Stallworth in a slot, Swan out. Stallworth. Play fake, and here's the throw, but it's low and incomplete. Stallworth was the target. Barbaro there on the coverage. Barbaro, who intercepted 10 passes last year and went to the Pro Bowl as a result. Watch the defensive backfield of the Kansas City Chiefs here. Playing zone, obviously, you see Barbaro rotating to this side at the 40-yard line right now. Stallworth trying to go outside the linebacker. There's a space there, but the ball is underthrown. And it ends up being second down and 10. Seattle led Cincinnati 21 nothing at one point now after an Archie Griffin touchdown run in the third quarter late in the third It's 21 20 Seattle in front by just a point Second and ten from the 32 five defensive backs now for Kansas City Audible at the line Swanee There it is just like you called it amazing such a gifted athlete. You have to respect his speed and the fact that Terry Bradshaw will throw it deep. Swan is hurt. He's getting up and evidently just shaken up. As we mentioned, he's been hobbling around with the bad hamstring. He was pulled down backwards by Gary Green. Now he's holding his left ankle, and it's his right hamstring which had been bothering him. Let's watch his pattern again. Look at him push downfield like he's going all the way. Just stops Bradshaw timing pass. Hits him on the numbers. Now watch the tackle. You see Green roll on his left ankle. I believe that's the injury. Bradshaw airs it out. And the catch is made by Jim Smith. Smith is spun down around the 35 of Kansas City. Now that's not a bad replacement. Swan gets hurt. Smith comes in fresh off the bench and catches a pass. Last year, worth repeating. Second leading score for the Pittsburgh Steelers with nine touchdowns. They mark the ball at the 33. Here it is again. Look at the time he has to throw it. Once again, those extraordinarily deep patterns run by the Pittsburgh Steeler receivers. It stretches the zone defense. More room for the receiver to get open. Stall 
Longworth left and Smith right. The backs, Hawthorne and Harris, split behind Bradshaw. 11.50 to play in the game. Here's the reverse. It's a triple reverse and a pitch off the free picker, but Bradshaw's in trouble, and then Harris drops the pass. I'm not sure who the Pittsburgh fans are booing, but obviously Franco Harris is not the intended receiver, obviously not the backup receiver. Fake reverse. Hands it back to Terry Bradshaw. That's an old Cincinnati play. But nobody open. And Franco Harris was not expecting the football. In truth, even though the play did not come off as they had hoped, it could have been a big gainer if, if Franco had been aware that the pass was on its way. Everybody going downfield with a pass receiver number on, which includes Franco Harris, should be awaiting the football. This is a doubleheader weekend to open up the NFL season on NBC, and you got to look at some of the games coming up. Most of you are going to see the return of the snake, Kenny Stabler, against the question mark, Pat Hayden and the Los Angeles Rams. Bradshaw again intercepted and then dropped by Eric Harris. Oh, he had it right in his hands and he had running room to boot. That ball appeared to be tipped at the line of scrimmage. I think Eric Harris was so surprised. He must like Harris. He's thrown it right to him twice. He caught it once and missed it once. Let's see if this ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage and changes its tra trajectory. No, I guess no, not. Uh -uh. But look at Harris. I think he's so surprised. Wow. Baltimore, New England, they have a wild one going. It's 29-21 Colts now. They're about midway through the fourth quarter. As I mentioned, Seattle 21 and Cincinnati 20. Cardinals were trailing 20 zip. Now it's 27 against Miami. The word on Lynn Swan from the sideline, a twisted ankle. We don't know if he will return. 11.38 to play. Third and 10. Big play from the 33-yard line of Kansas City. Hawthorne out of the backfield to make the catch. And he drags the tackle with him, and he's got the first down. He had Dombrowski draped over his back, but he dragged him for the yardage he needed. And bad coverage by Dombrowski. He was lined up on him on the line of scrimmage. And all Hawthorne did was go down two steps and cut across the middle. You'll see it from right in front of Mike Webster. Hawthorne will come in. Right there, that's bad coverage by Dombrowski in a very key, key situation. At the Silver Dome in Pontiac, early in the fourth quarter, Gary Danielson to Horace King, 17 yards and a touchdown. The 10-all tie is snapped. The Lions lead San Francisco 17-10, and Philadelphia continues to have an easy time with the Giants 24-3. We mentioned that 20-10 Dallas lead over Washington a bit earlier. 21-yard line of Kansas City with the Chiefs leading 30-26. Thornton. Fumble! Another fumble. Do the Steelers keep it? Bradshaw thinks they do. The Chiefs have other ideas. People are pointing in different directions. Kansas, Kansas City. City ball. Seven fumbles, four lost on the day. Sidney Thornton had not seen action for quite some time, and the first time he handles it, he coughs it up. The expressions of Bradshaw and Noel tell the story. The Chiefs dodge a bullet, they take it back with 10.36 remaining. We come back here in the fourth quarter at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy. We had mentioned that giveaway takeaway table for Kansas City, how it has been so instrumental in the past for them in big victories, and of course how it's so uncharacteristic for the Steelers to give the ball up this often, but this is what we've seen here. You got it right. Seven fumbles, four lost, and an interception. You can't expect to win a football game under those circumstances. But they still might. They trail it only 30-26. to 26. Joe Delaney carried the rookie, shaken up on the play. Jack Lambert really drilled him a shot. Let's see what's going on with the Cowboys and the Redskins. Raphael Septien from 24 yards out. They've got 8.47 to play fourth quarter. Dallas 23, Washington 10. Whoops, San Francisco comes right back. Joe Montana to Freddie Solomon, 21 yards and a touchdown. They're tied at 17, midway through the fourth quarter at the Silverdome. And they're attending now to Joe Delaney. I can't tell yet what might have happened to him, but we'll watch the play, see if we can pick up any sort of an injury. Trap up the middle. Well, I don't know. They're asking.
asking for a stretcher. It appears to be a very serious injury. Uh, here's a man they do not want to lose, highly prized rookie, and a guy, as we mentioned earlier, that they were counting on to add a dimension to their attack, which had been missing, at least the threat of somebody to break one out of the backfield, a guy they can isolate on little screens and passes into the flat in the fashion of Joe Washington, first with the Colts, now with the Redskins, or a Joe Cribs at Buffalo. Maybe not as good, but possibly in the same mold. As Al Dixon and the Kansas City trainer help Delaney off, we have a chance to remind you that next Saturday on NBC's Baseball Game of the Week, it's the pennant-minded Montreal Expos against the Cubs at beautiful Wrigley Field in Chicago. And some of you are going to see a great American League East battle as the Yankees take on the Red Sox. So check your local listings for the game in your area next Saturday at 2 Eastern time right here on NBC Sports. There is as much speculation when you talk about the Yankees and every game as to who's going to win along with who the manager's going to be. George Steinbrenner now giving Gene Michael the silent treatment. Meanwhile, Reggie Jackson on a hitting tear after slumping throughout the season. Reverse. They're going to go with a reverse, and it's Henry Marshall who carries. Kenny is ahead of him to throw a block. Marshall brought down on an excellent tackle. Excellent tackle by L.C. Greenwood. Nothing wrong with that at all. Misdirection holding Kansas City. And they're going to bring it back. Well, it's a good idea. Is it a good idea for Kenny to be out here blocking, considering his condition, the delicate ribs? Uh, only now that the play has passed and he did not get hurt. I wonder if he was the holder. Yes, he was. He grabbed his uh, left arm around Le Lauren Taves' leg, and that is holding. That's why they don't have holding quarterbacks blocking. during the run, number nine, 10 yards. That may be the only holding penalty he'll get in his career. This is a no-no. Watch his left arm. Wraps around the leg of Lauren Taves. That's a no-no, and you're right. An excellent play by L.C. Greenwood. The ball is back at the 20. We're at second and 14. We have exactly 10 minutes to play in this ballgame. Willie Scott, the rookie tight end, is in motion. And he must put it in the air. He has time. He lobs it out to Hadnock. Is across the 30 and shoved out at the 32. They got 12 on the play and they're very close to a first down. It's going to be third down and somewhere in the vicinity of a yard or two. Kansas City now 11 penalties, 89 yards. Pittsburgh 1 for 5. There's Joe Delaney. Now he looks a lot better sitting there than he did a moment ago when he had to be helped off. He was taking some medication, but normally what they take on the sideline right after an injury is an animal extract to relieve some of the swelling that he's going to have if it's a muscle tear or something along those lines. Not aspirin, not painkiller, but an animal extract. Sounds tasty. Third and one. McKnight. Extra effort. They stopped him. He fought all he could, but he couldn't get there. Early in the season, it's nice to see. Okay. Pittsburgh has beaten Kansas City seven straight times, including 21-16 here late last year. But the Chiefs lead it 30 to 26. 9:34 remaining. Bob Grupp to punt. Anderson and Smith are the deep men. They're standing at the Pittsburgh 30 under no pressure at all. Good Grupp punt. sends one spiraling out of there. Smith all the way back to the 15-yard line. Jim Smith, 20, 25, and down. Billy Jackson made the tackle. For Grupp, a 51-yard punt. For Smith, a 10-yard return. Here's where we stand, 9-14 left. It's Steeler ball. They trail by four. What kind of job that would appeal to you, being the terrible towel? Not today. Maybe in December, yes, but not today. All right, the Steelers have it at their 26-yard line. And Sidney Thornton, who fumbled the last time they had the ball, is out, although this is Franco Harris carrying. Gain of four. Frank Pollard, a second-year man from Baylor who has not played up until now from scrimmage, is in the ballgame. Where's number 44, 5'10", and 217? He replaces Thornton. Excellent blocking back, and I would think that the Pittsburgh Steelers right now are wondering if they can hang on to the football at all. Anytime they get 
and through the line of scrimmage you're going to see them be very conservative and now is when they need a certain amount of reckless abandon they're down by four points 845 left they got to turn on the afterburners right now Smith wide right Stallworth is in a slot Bradshaw Benny Cunningham at the 40 yard line for the first down unstoppable Benny went down 12 yards, turned around, faced Terry Bradshaw on at 6'5 and 260 pounds. Obviously, there's going to be a slight cushion between he and the strong safety. That's an unstoppable pass. Stallworth wide left, Smith wide right. Tight end Cunningham is on the left side. The backs, Pollard and Harris, are split behind Bradshaw. From just across the 40 on first down, Terry drops, throws. Again, he threads the needle. And Cunningham sheds tacklers before being belted down. Excellent reception. They are in Kansas City territory. The clock is running with 7.45 left, a gain of 17. And Bob, he forced that pass in there. Cunningham is well covered, but he makes a great catch, and you see the strength of this man. Watch this. He forces it in there. One guy tries to knock him down, Burris. Linebacker Spaney, the, the Chiefs' leading tackler, over the top of him. He is at times bionic. 41-yard line now of Kansas City. 720 showing as Bradshaw takes the snap, ignores the backs, drops straight back, airs out the bomb, Jim Smith, touchdown! Touchdown, what a play! St. Louis, 
Miami beat the Cardinals 20 to 7. Miami will be 1 and 0 when they host Pittsburgh on Thursday night. Dallas lengthens their lead to 26-10 over the Redskins. Septi and another field goal. This one covered 18 yards. Cole out, a fifth defensive back in for Pittsburgh. A dandy going on here. Baltimore and New England. They're at Foxborough. It's 29-28. They're late in the fourth quarter. Big third down play. Marshall went up but couldn't hold it. Henry Marshall gave it a great, great effort but couldn't catch it. along with Bob Trumpy. That was not Henry Marshall, it was Carlos Carson with the leaping effort on the last pass from Kenny. They have forced the Chiefs to give it up without a first down. 5.41 on the clock, and Bob Grump is going to have to punt. Smith and Anderson wait at the Pittsburgh quarter. Steelers, 33, Chiefs, 30. Grump with a wobbler, it's returnable. Smith comes up to grab it. Smith lunges into Kansas City territory just across midfield, and that's where the Steelers will take over. Phil Kansick with the tackle. A punt of only 35 yards, a return of seven. Coming up very shortly, the second half of our season opening NFL doubleheader on NBC. NFL 81, Houston against the Rams at Los Angeles. Dick Enberg will be out there along with Merlin Olsen. The Jets play Buffalo at Shea, and Oakland, Denver will also be seen by parts of the country. Check your local listings for the game in your area, but most of you are going to see Houston against Los Angeles. The Snake against Hayden. Obviously, here at Three River Stadium, there's still some life, some spirit left in that Pittsburgh defense. When they needed a big play, they came up with a John Banasak with the sack. Final from Atlanta. Falcons embarrassed the Saints, 27-0 in Bum Phillips' coaching debut. Bradshaw marks the signals with five and a half left in this one. It's going to go to the air. Flares one out to Smith, who dodges a tackler and turns it into a six-yard gain. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the NBC television network. This is WDAF TV4, Kansas City. Clock running with 5.10 left. Trump, if I had told you coming over to the stadium this morning as we left the hotel that a combined total of better than 60 points would be scored in this game, would you have bought it? No, I didn't think so. Uh, Kansas City has suffered a lack of offense through the preseason, and, and last year I did not expect Kansas City to score 30 points against Pittsburgh. And because of their uh, Kansas City's lack of uh, offense last year, I would think that, that Chuck Noe would be uh, very incensed at his team for allowing that many. Of course, the turnover, seven fumbles, four lost, and an interception are the biggest part of that. Second down and six, and Franco breaks a tackle and is very close to the first down marker, but shy of it, I think, by about a foot or two. Third and short coming up for Pittsburgh. Phil Simms has hit Leon Perry from 19 yards late in the fourth quarter. But the Giants appear to be out of it against the Eagles. Philadelphia 24 and New York 10. Well, if Kansas City can get the ball back here, they're just three points behind. This game is not over by a long shot, although Pittsburgh's defense has come to life. And remember the range of Lowry. If they can get him to within 50 or so, they've got a crack at it. Mel Blunt. I don't know if he's losing hair as he ages or if it's still the same as it always was. It's impossible to tell. Tight formation with both Grossman and Cunningham. Two tight ends on the right side. That's Pollard in motion. They give it to Franco. Ooh, they hit him early. But I think he's got it. They stopped that play pretty well, but he didn't need much. And I think Franco Harris has it, and he does. Clock continues to run. Three minutes and 15 seconds remaining. It has not been a classic Steeler performance, but it may read 1-0 and oh, three minutes and seven seconds from now. We still have the two-minute warning and three Kansas City timeouts to deal with, however, so the Chiefs are very much alive. Ball at their 39 as Pittsburgh brings it up. And Pittsburgh has given the ball up like it's very slippery today. Anything could happen here. Go. Bangs out 
four or five. That's what they want on first down. Chiefs call a timeout. So evidently, Trump, their intention here is to stop them on this series and by using the two-minute warning, get possession with nothing less than two minutes remaining in this game. But of course, they gave away a fairly big chunk on first down. Yeah. Harris now 17 to six for 65 yards and two touchdowns on the day. One of his better starts in a season. The Steelers have all three of their timeouts left, which they are not interested in at the moment. The Chiefs have two left. The Chiefs open at home next week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they have plenty of seats remaining. They got about a 75,000 seat capacity at Arrowhead. So they do not sell out as many games as they once did. They'll have a big crowd, but there are still seats available for all you Kansas City fans. As John McKay's Tampa Bay Bucks come in. Sidney Thornton coming back into the ball game now. Going to have a chance to uh, make up for his fumbles today. Gets a fine reception as he enters the lineup as well. Walter Payton scores from 11 yards out, but they missed the point after touchdown. There have been a lot of missed conversions on this first Sunday in the NFL all over the league. We've seen two of them here by Dave Trout of Pittsburgh. It's 13-6 in the third quarter. Green Bay leading Chicago. Okay, second down five. Franco. Again, close to the first down. Depends upon where they spot it. Either it's a first down or he's shy by a yard at most. Bob Thornton came in there to be nothing but a lead blocker for Franco Harris. Chuck Dole has said time and time again that one of the best blocking backs he has ever seen is Sidney Thornton as Kansas City takes a timeout. Third down, down one. It is third and one. Now the Chiefs have one timeout left, so they have to stop them on this play. Levy and most of his staff we have not had that many shots of the Pittsburgh assistants but perhaps we can pick out George Perlis who we are told dropped some 70 pounds in weight during the offseason I'd like to be his tailor you can get rich I believe that's him right there is that the new slim down George Perlis an assistant head coach one would hardly recognize him Sims has scored from a yard out late in the fourth quarter for Detroit and they have jumped in front of San Francisco 24 to 17. We are told that not much time at all remains in that game. Very late, Detroit 24, San Francisco 17. 2.29 on the clock at Three Rivers. Pittsburgh is 4 of 7 on third down conversions. And here's the biggest one of the day. And shifting in alongside Franco. Grossman in motion. Franco, first down. Now they have one timeout and the two-minute warning left to stop the clock. They take their last timeout, Kansas City does. Pittsburgh hangs on to the ball. They win. Not a pretty win, but they win. Let's engage in a little bit of second guessing here, and certainly not meant maliciously at all. Kansas City still very much in this ball game, and a good chance to win it. Would you have taken the first of your three timeouts after Franco Harris's first down carry, considering that he got five yards on the first down carry? Yeah, I think I take it any time. Okay. Uh, and. You're going to stop the clock at two minutes again. You're hoping to play the percentages. Uh, their defense has done reasonably well against the Pittsburgh offense all day. You're hoping that whenever the third down conversion comes up, you can stop them. Then you've got the two-minute warning on the change of possession, or when you get the football, that's one timeout more that you're going to get. Yeah, I'd use it. It was more a question on my part than an opinion, but nonetheless, I think some people out there watching probably wondered the same yeah, thing. I would use it. I don't think that they made any mistake in doing that. I don't think Kansas City has anything to hang their head about today. Playing uh, Pittsburgh in Three River Stadium to a 33-30 football game, I believe psychologically, will lift this football team. There was about a two-minute chunk in this fourth quarter. 
Bradshaw had them moving. Some pinpoint passes culminated by the 41-yard bomb to Smith. Then the booming rocket shot kickoff by Trout. Oh, they're in on him, and here's the fumble. Oh, oh no, look at this. They take it all the way. Howard may take it all the way. No flags, touchdown Kansas City. My goodness, look at Terry Bradshaw hang his head. A blitz by Thomas Howard up the middle. Nobody touched him. That is absolute, utter shock on the face of Terry Bradshaw. Before he could turn to make the handoff, the ball jarred from Bradshaw. And I was starting to say how there was a two-minute segment of this game where the Steelers got so pumped up that they turned the whole momentum around and apparently won it. And here we see the Chiefs with just one timeout remaining. It was first down for Pittsburgh. Their situation appeared hopeless. All the Steelers had to do was protect the ball, but Howard shot through. He picks it up and will get the official distance on the return in just a moment. Let's give credit to the coaching staff of the Kansas City Chiefs. They did not give up on the sideline. With just over two minutes to go, they come with a blitz in that situation. 72 yards on the fumble recovery and return. And boy, I admire those Kansas City coaches. Coaches, I mean, they've they've done an excellent job today. Wow. Well, that was happening almost before we had time to turn around. The fifth-year man out of Texas Tech, Thomas Howard, 72 yards on the fumble recovery and return. That was the eighth Pittsburgh fumble all told. The fifth one they have lost, and needless to say, the most costly. However. Considering the way Bradshaw had been moving his team and considering the fact that a minute 59 remains, they are by no means out of it. Lowry can force them to score a touchdown to win it by hitting this, which he does. So the pad is now four points for Kansas City, 37-33, and let's watch an astounding play again. I think you'll see Terry Bradshaw nonchalantly turn around. Nothing wrong. I'm not saying it's anything wrong, but look at... That's, I think that's Manu Maliuna. It Manu is. Maliuna. Frank blitz. Manu Maliuna. Nobody touched him. Howard with outstanding speed. I'd put him against any wide receiver there is in the game today. Barbaro with a good tackle, 72 yards. And I disagree, this football game's over. I've been on a football field where something like that shocking has happened. You're gone. Your blood stops running. I mean, as a player for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they might as well go in the locker room. If they come back, I'll be the most surprised person in this stadium. You say it's over. I'm saying it's over. I you... say they threaten before this game is over. There is. Maybe they win it, but I say they threaten for sure. In a matter of 30 seconds, Bob, you can't come back as an offensive player in this situation. I don't care how gifted a team you are. I mean, you stop sweating. You start wondering what's going on. You start thinking about what the coach is going to say in the films. Look at hands on hips. It's over. I hate to say that and be the broadcaster of doom, but you have no idea what that can do to you as a player. Anderson on a relatively short kickoff by Nick Lowry. Anderson trying to get outside. A flag flies, and Anderson is shoved out as he crosses the 30. They have a minute 54 and all three of their timeouts left. How'd they get four? You mean three? I said they have a minute 54 on the clock and all three of their timeouts. Okay, fine. Okay. Holding. Pittsburgh. Bob, you have no idea what that does to you as a player when you get so pumped up and you feel like, uh, what am I going to do in the shower room? What am I going to do after the game? And then all of a sudden, that hits you. It's, it's, it's a car Holding wreck. During the run back, number 61, 10 yards, first out. Tyrone Jim. McGriff. Jim Tunney tacks on some more bad news. Chuck Noll in the midst of a nightmare. To make matters worse, Lynn Swan limped off into the locker room just moments ago. That injured ankle rules him out for the rest of the day. Cunningham goes in a slot right. Stallworth is wide to the left. Smith is wide to the right. They start from inside their own 15-yard line. Bradshaw swings it out of the back here to Franco Harris. Stutter step across the 20. Lunges to the 24-yard line. It's very close to a first down. Stop by Harbor. They may make me eat my words here, Bob. Well, they needed that play because they were so deep in their own territory. They needed that just for breathing room. Bradshaw again. There you see the time. Minute and a half. Terry out of the pocket. Incomplete. That'll stop the clock. Benny Cunningham, the target. Believe me, though, 
show they are fighting it right now this is the time when when you're out there in the huddle you just question your worth as a football player everybody goes through highs and lows in an athletic career and you can't be any lower than they must feel right now if they come back I'll put it this way if they come back I don't want to qualify my statement I still don't think they will this is a much better prepared team than they've shown today you got a quick glimpse of the Baltimore New England final. The surprising Colts beat the Patriots 29-28. Ooh, and the papers in Boston will be singeing. The Pats come tomorrow morning. What's uh, Russ Francis's phone number? It's in Hawaii somewhere. Very long distance. Bradshaw. Ooh, he misses Franco Harris. Third and ten coming up from the 24, a minute 24 on the clock. We gave you that final earlier. The Dolphins, as expected, beat the Cardinals 20 to 7. Cincinnati, after trailing 21 nothing, leads 27 21 in the fourth against the Seahawks. And this will make it a pleasant week for you on your talk show in Cincinnati. Thank Trump. you very much, sir. Giants lose to the Eagles. That's 11 and 0 for Dick Vermeil against the Giants as the Eagle head coach. Dallas continues to lead in the fourth at Washington. Atlanta blanks New Orleans to spoil Bum Phillips' debut. Here it is on third down. Bradshaw looking and throwing. Intercepted. Picked off by Gary Barbaro. Now Pittsburgh still has three timeouts left. Theoretically, they can stop the clock after every play. But I must turn and shake the hand of Bob Trump. You called it right, Trump. You have no Evidently, idea. Evidently, they could not come back. Bradshaw still standing out in the middle of the field. This ball should not have been thrown, but what choice do they have? That's a 21-yard interception return. I believe the Pittsburgh Steelers have now turned the football over seven times. And as you can see by the information on your screen, intercepting pass is nothing new for Gary Barbara. A day like this, not too commonplace, though, for Terry Bradshaw and his mates. Bob, I must also tell you that I believe that this will have a lasting effect on this football team. I don't think you can just you can just forget a football game like this. Ted McKnight rumbles for a first down, and it gives us a chance to tell you that the executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer of NFL football is Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by Kenneth Edmondson, directed by Dick Klein, technical director Lenny Stucker. Associate Director John Libretto, Associate Producer Mike Hadley. And also a big pat on the back for our New York-based NBC camera crew. They worked a baseball game with Dick Enberg and Tim McCarver on Friday night at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Came on down, set up here at Three Rivers, and they have done a wonderful job providing the pictures, and what a way to kick off NFL 81. A wild game and a game which revealed a lot of interesting things about both teams. 37-33 Chiefs with 52 seconds left. Bob, this is a no-no in this business, but I'm going to direct our cameraman to shoot me Terry Bradshaw on the left 27-yard line. On his helmet, hands over his face. It has got to be one of the lowest points in Terry Bradshaw's career. It's not totally his fault. Other people fumbled the ball, but boy, oh boy, oh boy. So much of this season rides on the shoulders of Terry Bradshaw. And in the offseason, having not become a television star, he was saying, I'm ready. I'm going to lead this team to the Super Bowl again. We'll show you. That's a very inauspicious beginning. Steelers have two timeouts left. McKnight carries, and Pittsburgh will use one of those timeouts right now. Or will this is, this is the time when you do not want to be a head football coach in the NFL. What do you say? I wouldn't want to be around when Chuck Noll says it, whatever it may be. Now, the Rams have jumped out to an early lead, 7-zip on the Oilers. As soon as this game is over, most of you will see the Los Angeles-Houston game. We will shift right to it. With Dick Enberg and Father Murphy, I understand. That is correct. One Merlin Olsen. Well. The Steelers eventually used that timeout. Now they have one remaining. It's second down and six. The ball is at the seven. And 28 ticks on the clock separate the Kansas City Chiefs from a miracle victory. When I say a miracle victory, only in the way it ended. It isn't a miracle that they were in the game. They played well enough to win throughout. Well, Kansas City fumbled. 
I mean, Pittsburgh fumbled on a handoff. Why can't Kansas City? And all those people who are now out there on the uh, freeways heading home, and I mean, this place emptied about a minute and a half ago, are going to be rushing back in there if it happens. Stranger, that's why they put points on the end of that football. Look what they've got here, though, Trump. They've got a guy back just in case there should be a fumble playing center field. Smart move. Kenny just falls on the ball. How many people in this country would, after the first game of the season, have sounded like fools if they said Pittsburgh would be 0-1 after this game and Kansas City 1-0? This will snap, barring yet another amazing occurrence, a seven-game Steeler winning streak over the Chiefs. Is there not some irony in this? May I remind you of a play back in, what was it, 72 or 73? from that day forward called the Immaculate Reception. Franco. Against the Oakland Raiders. That's the way it started. Strange things happen in this football game. But talk about riding a roller coaster of emotions. You saw Terry Bradshaw so pumped after he hit Jim Smith with that perfect touchdown bomb and the crowd reacting as the defense came alive and then just moments later into the ultimate football valley as they give the game away. The Steelers have no timeouts left. That was a third down play, but time's going to run out on them. That'll be a great plane ride back to Kansas City. And a Bob great now, plane ride. With a record of 0-1 as a happy Marv Levy goes off, his team is 1-0 as they prepare to host Tampa Bay on Sunday at Arrowhead. But the Steelers have to take this very difficult to accept defeat and an 0-1 record down to Miami and turn around and play Thursday night. 300 yards, he threw two touchdown passes, Franco Harris ran for a couple of scores, but they fall short, 37-33, Kansas City wins it as Thomas Howard scoops up a fumble and runs 72 miraculous yards for the game-winning touchdown. Don't forget, another exciting NFL doubleheader next Sunday. Most of you will see the Houston Oilers and the Cleveland Browns, or the Patriots and the Eagles. Now stay tuned for the second half of Week 1. Most of you will see the Oilers and Rams right after these messages from your local stations. For Bob Trumpy, I'm Bob Costas, so long from Pittsburgh. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United serves more of this land than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television.